with us, Umani Tehembe, Tehemba brother. And he is, um, he, he is the, I, I guess he would be CEO and co-founder of Black Star Repatriation and uh, Pan-African Community over in Ghana. Uh, we got both of them on. We are looking forward to a very exciting uh, discussion today. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce to you and turn it over to Ada Nago Brown. Take it away. Hi, everybody. Um, so I'm, I'm happy to be with you all today. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, I'm um, from Cameroon. Cameroon. <laughs> um, and um, I've been living in the U.S. since the 70s, actually. And uh, for the last 10 or so years, helping Africans in the diaspora reconnect to the continent, doing various things, including tours to Africa, but more importantly, uh, doing things like uh, naming ceremonies and um, events with our traditional leaders coming to America or um, us going to Africa and really understand the culture and the tradition of our people. Our goal is to make sure that everybody understands where they come from. Um, and we work with a lot of people that have done their DNA. They want to go back home to find out more about their people. So um, it's very important for us to do that. Um, and as we grow and as we look into other ways that we can make this, this community more sustainable, um, it was just a natural progression for us uh, when uh, Pastor Mike came to us, uh, to me and said, okay, you know, we're looking to move to Africa, you know, can you help? And so um, I don't think many people can say no to Pastor Mike, but <laughs> so anyway, so, um, so I said, sure, you know, I'd be willing to help. And I think it's important to note that, that he had the vision to understand what it's going to take for us to kind of be, um, you know, as, as our next step. And I was just telling my husband that, you know, we're, we're looking at our 40 acres and the mule, but we don't realize that we can get that somewhere else. So, and, and there's a lot of people because, you know, 45 is coming up for reelection, who knows what's going to happen, but you know, that exit strategy has to be in the back of a lot of people's minds. What are we going to do? Are we going to stay here? Are we going to move? So I promised my children that I would have something for them so that they didn't feel like they were stuck in a situation they could not escape from. So that is why I'm involved because I, I believe in this project. I believe in having something in Africa. Even though I'm from Cameroon, have land in Cameroon, I think Ghana is also a great place as a starting point uh, for most Africans in the diaspora. So with all that said, um, I'd like to introduce you again to um, Bomani, my Jamaican brother, um, so that he can take it over and talk to you about the project that they've developed. Uh, greetings, uh, sister um, Ada, or uh, as I say, I appreciate you, uh, sister Ada, and Greetings, family. Uh, this is Bomani Tamba. And uh, once again, this is a great introduction. And uh, thank you for having the strength and energy to be available. Um, all day, I was uh, literally surprised uh, to see you again. So as um, um, Ada was talking about how uh, she connected into this project, uh, the same way for myself, um, uh, as far as just literally looking to this, find something we can just build a future on. So that's what we're going to go into details on. So what I want to do with family is give you a brief introduction about myself. Um, uh, my name is Bomani Tamba, and the company that I run is called Africa for the Africans. .org is our website. It's uh, Africa for the Africans, tours and investments. Uh, so that's what you'll see in the background. Uh, what we're dealing with is the investment aspect of it, which was always a foundation of uh, once we started studying about uh, African roots and culture uh, in the early 2003 and 2004, and uh, connected a group of uh, uh, my brothers, and um, that was our goal, it was to literally create opportunities as far as how we can actually live and do business in Africa based on tours, or based on making the continent or Ghana just look very interested based on our style of tourism or our style of this you need networking. To mute everybody. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Let's move it. 
All right, perfect. Uh, and as far as our, I was uh, saying or introducing as far as our Black Star Pan-African community, uh, the history was literally to create the, e the energy as far as people traveling. And you, you know, may seem more open to now, maybe that, you know, Ghana is a country I can live in and I'm interested, uh, but you run into all the same thing that uh, a lot of us run into. You know, it's, you know, it's a serious big move. So now you're thinking beyond going up somewhere where you just wanted to learn about your roots and now living. So now it becomes a legal situation. It comes uh, either acquiring a property, getting land and so on. So uh, the investment aspect of what our goal is to just keep on just doing research. You know, you have to get into the game sometimes to, uh, to learn. So all of what we've been dealing with is based on experience and work with previous group like uh, Piankra, Garvey Town. I know the people at uh, Sable. I know a few other groups and, you know, and it becomes a world where you just, you know, you, you just learn from what's going on and also you incorporate certain things to, to organize something to where it's, it's you know, kind of like taking it to the next level. So that's what we're going to uh, talk about. And that's kind of what we've been wanting to build towards. It's not, not necessarily, you know, tours, uh, but it's like, you have to kind of build a foundation of what, where or what people know you from. Um, and, you know, just like here in Atlanta, I was a part of different organizations, so you kind of build that foundation. Um, and then, you know, you know, you build certain other backgrounds and you kind of put it together just like you put your, your business resources. So I told my uh, friends, uh, those have been traveling with me for years and that's what we wanted to do. I said, all hands on deck, let's go do our own research, our own, um, you know, market planning and organizing and just kind of put together a solid program based on, you know, what we've been ex exposed to and then coming up with all the things that were issues that uh, we had to deal with, which were things like business professionalism and organization and um, legality and legal support or legal setup. Uh, and those things are, you know, are more than the simple things. Uh, so you want to make sure everything is sound and, and, and set up. So the information I'm posting here and let me just post the all right so I'll post on the chat uh, the actual link to our website Africa for the Africans .org. and once you're on our website uh, you click on black star community from the main menu And so once you click on that link, I got screen share and set. And that's what you're gonna see right there, those articles. Um, uh, introduction, uh, uh, site map, land survey, GPS, location, uh, lands commission, uh, search, uh, prime objectives, business opportunities, building and buying homes, membership rules and code of conduct, membership application, pictures and videos, bylaws, getting started, uh, land costs, requirements, and refund policy. So yes, uh, it's, uh, it's one of those things where it's a lot to go through, but what you're honestly trying to do is you're trying to lay out something where you want to go from the front or the top to the bottom and then go through everything all together. Uh, so, and then once you get to the bottom of every article, you, know, you have an option to click to the next page or go back or you can always click the main menu and it reload back to this page. But this is they're showing you how you get access to this page. That way you can always go back and look at um, you know, information. Everything is titled uh, as detailed as you can get. So um, when you sum all that up, it's kind of what you want to know and have an idea of that off before you won't even think about investing any kind of money or even, you know, a lot of times it, uh, it's, it's a situation where Someone can look at the details for clarity without having to, you know, you know, and then you know compare it before they move forward. But and nevertheless, I'm always available whether people look at information or not. Uh, and but this is what I usually go to for clarity. That way, we're all operating from a standpoint of the same details. Uh, so these are two documents that was created. From, uh, these were created from two documents. The bylaws itself is the full bylaw, and organize it as best as possible to look as organized on the uh, website. Um, and that represents 19 page, but the eight page overview is broken up into all the documents I just explained, uh, except for the bylaws. Uh, and those are two documents that we created to where in, 
um, you know, we'll email it to you, look it over, and then you sign. Uh, that way we have clarity, and it's the same thing we're doing for everyone. That way everyone agreed to the same code of conduct, the same rules, regulation, and things like that, and no one can say that they didn't know. So that's probably the more difficult part of it, uh, having to read those documents, but it's something that, honestly, I would want to know and want to have clear access to before I make any kind of confirmed decision. All right, so let me start with the uh, introduction. Uh, so that is our Black Star Repatriation and Pan-African Community logo. And that's one of our group pictures in December 2019 tour when we just all visited the uh, chief and I'm in the black and white at the bottom of the red shoes. And so the Black Star Repatriation and Pan-African Community uh, is set for 15 acres and we'll add uh, 50 acres uh, this summer for phase two uh, to make it a total of 65 acres. But our community um, our vision is one that search for redemption. Our goal is to this, um, you know, not just uh, you know, feel the emotion energy of our ancestors being stolen, but also you know, kind of you know, make certain things right as far as this reorganize, establishing our reconnection. Uh, so uh, what more practical things to do than to build um, you know, a village or a community um, titled repatriation and pan-Africanism. All right, and let's go down a little bit. Uh, <clears throat> so one of the things is people always ask me where you wanna go and live. And so we see this as, uh, you know, as a viable option to connect uh, right there to West Africa, where we have a foundation, especially when we talk about like Kwame Nkrumah, they used to study that broader energy of independence uh, to this country. And I'm trying to get somebody to mute. All right. And uh, below it also talk about certain uh, programs, but again, most of what we have as our introduction is to really just um, you know, the same thing as, as I um, reiterate, is to create an energy where people of light minds that have this righteous energy that really want this to happen and we could just never find the right people to make it happen. You know, it's a program created where we organize ourselves and just kind of make, make it full of energy to where we look out for each other and do all the wonderful things that we talk about what we should be doing and actually be able to do it because you're in an environment where it's organized that way. So that's our last group and uh, some of them are part of uh, this project. Others are you know, just getting to learn more about Africa and, and being open. So a lot of time when we do these things, you know, and that's why I tell everyone we have access to a whole lot of people because um, people are traveling, they're trying to find the same thing too. So it was you know, ideal that we just end up just organizing our own project that way we can keep an accountability so people are not disappointed. And then you know, I don't have to get into negotiations with you know, two sets of party of people that I know uh, that just basically one, one or the other person just didn't uh, follow through on their part of the deal to where you, know, you have issues. So uh, that's why us organizing this and just uh, running the, our own management style operation uh, allows us to control all of the, the situations from what's going on here in the U.S. with different people that are interested to the people that uh, we're organizing and our business partners on the ground. Uh, and our goal is to make everything as inclusive as possible. That way we don't have, you know, every, everyone is more have like internal uh, investment in the operation to make it work. So the more people that I feel that you have that are dedicated to the same project uh, and see the same value in it for themselves are going to make it grow. Just like the business owners that become very successful. Your goal is to invest back also in the community and also for us to uh, do a lot of public relations uh, and connect with, there's an orphanage there for us to build wonderful relationship and also give uh, wonderful support for community and, and a lot of other uh, opportunities as far as us building business. When we look at ground up, it's maybe not something that we used to seeing, but it's one of those situations where you, you're in your home and um, Everything that you deal with from the house to what's outside is owned by others. Uh, you go out to the main street, the road, uh, you go out to the malls, and it's this majority owned by other people. So 
it's like you create an opportunity where we can self-invest in everything that we need. We just got to be able to I don't see this work together from a ground up as um looking at the picture of me running over to our lawyer um uh to get some get something from him. Uh but it's it like you know, you you like looking at this and you're like you know, can you really pull it off? And it's like, and it's the same thing I tell people based on all the things we have logistically worked out as far as even writing complex itinerary. People look at it like, there's no way I can make it around all these countries and do all these things. I tell them, I can show you better, I can tell you. But it's just basically, if you sit down and you like lay out a uh, you know, naval military style game plan as far as like uh, organization on the highest level with uh, this logistics operation, uh, anything could be executed, especially if you know you're flowing with the order, of just how things work. So, and then you, you know, and the goal is literally to also cover every single angle and every base and every you know single way you can cover yourself. Um, and you know, the, the you know, so um, you know, every time I look back at this, you know, I look back when we didn't have all of the things that we have and the details that we have. Not even then, you know, we didn't have a site map or even the land survey, which I. I uh, end up getting on that first day right there, the land survey. Somebody's got their, uh, can yeah. everybody just Time mute their call? Wait, wait, Omani. There's somebody that has a 313 area code that has to mute their, can you, can you see that one? All right, perfect, I just showed up. Okay. Perfect, thank you. And so family, this is the site map and uh, I'm gonna actually click to the next page. Now see, this is it with uh, a little more detail. So the site map, map above is an overview of our projected layout for our future uh, community. The property is 15 acres plus, um, and it's all 60 lots of um, 80 by 100 feet. Uh, so. If you're looking for an acre that's uh, above four plots, we'll get close to that size of what you would consider an acre. Um, so uh, 50 plots are designated for residential, which is all taken in phase one. And the other 10 um, plots are laid out for security center, um, office uh, building, a community center, and park. Right. Uh, office space um, and things like that uh, are limited on one phase. So the goal uh, and negotiation right now is the 50 acres to make us big enough space to where we can use um, you know, we can use the uh, the 50 acres of 200 plots and we can break it down down to a situation like 20 to 32 plots for uh, farming, 100 plots for residential or more medical building, school building, um, should be a store there and a few other things, and then 40 to 50 plots uh, for on-site uh, commercial investment for those who want warehouse or additional space to do their uh, different kind of business. Uh, and we can also add an additional park, community center, uh, business center, and uh, all that uh, is based on the energy of uh, phase uh, two. Uh, and we are, we are basing our energy on phase two based on us just showing everybody everything we're doing in phase one and getting to a part, part of progress in the next uh, three months. So uh, everyone may wonder where is this place at, this magical place. So location, uh, GPS coordinates. So just click on this Google Maps here and And let me show you a bigger view. So though, for those who are familiar with uh, Ghana, the main thing that you may hear is Accra and Cape Coast. So you can see uh, Accra to your right and Cape Coast to your left. And as you can see, this, everything is on this beautiful um, coast, which, is, which would be the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, so uh, when you look at this pen, um, and if you were to do the math, it is approximately two miles to the main road and also three, uh, sorry, excuse me, three miles uh, from the main road and two miles to the beach. And, um, and that may be the other way around based on how it looks on the map. And uh, it puts you approximately about, um, about 90 minutes from Accra, even though you see Accra is closer. 
and Cape Coast a little further because from from the Winnemar Junction to Accra, that's where you have more traffic going that direction. And uh, Cape Coast, um, 90 minutes. And all of this is our uh, give or take. Uh, so it puts you in a decent location. All right. And uh, let me, uh, let's get back to the main page and uh, that's GPS. Um, all right, I'm just trying to show everybody a better picture, but right there, um, this, you have all of that water, and you know, you, you're looking at the map. Uh, if this was like like Jamaica, what you see is this number of resorts here, but as you can see, it's plain, and so you know, you have all of this area to invest in being, building a metropolis, yeah. So, so that's why I'm always excited about this and been excited since September and doing everything in my power and all my connections that are here and my folks in Ghana to work together to pull off um, you know, history. All right. And so back on the main menu of the map, um, that's what the main menu looked like. So you, you can just always go back, click on site map, but we're finished with that. Um, no, sorry, one more thing I need to show you. Forget about that. All right, the actual paperwork. So this is the first set of paperwork, which is called your land survey. All right, so originally we were looking to get more than 15 acres, probably about closer to 20. So th this was a rough draft of, you, you can see on the top, 23.67 acres. So once the survey was uh, done, it's, it was uh, shown that uh, part of the land belonged to another group. So we was able to just redo the survey and that is our land, 15 acres, Black Star Pan-African community. So that's how the land survey looks. So when you look at the site map, it's a reflection of the actual survey with all the plots laid out and everything all calculated. So those are the uh, the documents. Uh, if you're looking to do land deals and things like that, you want to make sure um, whoever dealing with have all of these paperwork and everything. It may be some people may not, you know, people may not just think it's important. But every single phase I'm explaining to. You. So this is the second phase. You run that survey to the lands commission and um, and you know, show your request, your lawyer representation information, stamp seal. And um, you just get a report on it. And once that report is clear, then you can kind of just connect back with the chief and say, hey, hey this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a deposit down and we're going to sign an MOU. Uh, that way the deal is good. So at the bottom, what I have is a list of PDF. So this is, I'm sure this is not the right one, but I am. It's probably one of those documents I get when I get to Ghana. But uh, let me make it smaller. I right, just so a deal between myself and Nana Haiti, the chief. Uh, that's um, so. Someone has to someone has to sign for the deal and accept the deal. You know, like buyer and seller. Uh, so. And these are the uh, documents that would actually be emailed to you, MOU, uh, 99 year lease. Those are things that's uh, literally not on the website. Um, talk about 99 year lease, where's that at? All right, there you go. Uh, so once you, and I'm gonna honestly scroll down to this, is this our signature uh, to confirm the deal? But uh, what I wanna show you is the actual term in the deal. So you're just basically agreeing on these terms that look foreign because in Ghana cities, but nevertheless, it's, it's a legal amount that, um, you know, you pay for the land, you make that deal, then you calculate everything else that needs to be calculated. That way you don't have to keep on asking people for send this amount of money and send this amount of money. And so you create a system where the $3,000 that covers a whole lot of things. Uh, so it's an advantage of where you go somewhere else and then you have to now come up with money to pay for this, to pay for this, to pay for this and things like that. So, only thing that doesn't cover is your own individual registration of your plot and your actual land survey and then um, your your building permit. 
Uh, beyond that, uh, you're looking at land clearing and a whole lot of um, the things uh, as far as even taking care of the legal aspect of it and also the consultation. So uh, when you put your money together, it allows you to just create a better deal. Um, so once we are, um, so that is our, our scan uh, detailed deal. And what I want to show up real quick is, uh, since we talk about it, the 99 year lease. And by request, uh, this is sent to uh, uh, Pastor Mike, uh, but also these are things that just, you know, even if somebody say, can I see this? You have no problem emailing documents. So uh, uh, Nana Haiti and Black Star Pan African Community. So I am going to, uh, it's very short, so I'm just uh, scrolling, and that way we just kind of go through the summary of things. And all I'm saying that is we signed a 99 year lease, and then we don't have to pay any annual rent. All of those are just you know, important stuff. Uh, that's why you just need a legal person to title everything legally and you know, put it in writing and everything is agreed on what you sign and stamp. So that's our goal is to just negotiate good deals and make it work. And uh, here's a stamp of the deal we made. So that is that for, and let me make sure this is showing. Uh, one thing, uh, I wanted to make sure that um, everybody was able to view the, uh, the, the lease and MOU. If not, then I need to fix this screen sharing. It's good. Uh, what can uh, let me fix this? Uh, let me adjust the screen share real quick. Stop. All right. And I'm going to do, I'm going to add something to screen sharing real quick. That way. Uh... If anybody has any questions while he's doing that, please um, go on the chat uh, area and ask your questions. Um, and I'll try to answer the questions if he's gone through it, but if he hasn't, then we'll just wait till he does. And then, you know, I can clarify it so that you know for sure. All right, perfect. Uh, what I want to do is check real quick on... Um, if your phone is not, not muted, please mute your phone. Thank you. There are two phones unmuted. All right, perfect. So uh, I just want to confirm two things. Uh, um, can you see the thing where it says 99 year lease on a screen share? Yes. I'm going to switch now to the MOU. Uh, can you see the MOU? Um, I see the certificate of proof. All right, so you see. All right, uh, perfect. Uh, so what I need to do, I want everyone to be able to see the, the files I'm sharing. So I just need to make an adjustment real quick. So even if you want to open for, if you just want to fill in people on a few things, I'll just uh, adjust the screen real quick. Okay. So multiple items are shared. Okay. Which will take a few seconds. Okay. So, um, so while he does that, uh, somebody asked a question about the $3,000. Um, he hasn't gone over all of it, but I want to address that since we have a little bit of time. So it's $2,500 for the land, which is an 80 by, eight, uh, 80 by 100, which is equivalent to a quarter acres of land. 
um, and it's $2,500. Now there's an administrative cost, which is $500. And that covers like, you know, breezeways, uh, all the administrative things that you need to do to make it happen. Um, so uh, we're talking roads, infrastructure, that sort of thing. It goes to, towards that, correct? Uh, yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, it's covering a lot of things. Uh, we still have a development uh, fund that we have to organize and, um, and monthly uh, maintenance fee um, that you use to take care of certain things. So those are more in the things where uh, no one is paying those things yet because uh, uh, since we are broken up in the committees, uh, our goal is to organize these things. And right now, as, as a matter of fact, talking about organizing is in these things. I want to see if you can see this thing that say bylaws. Yes. And then I'm, I'm going to switch to the MOU. This is an MOU. This is the MOU right now. Yes, yes so you see the MOU. Right. All right, perfect. So uh, what I wanted to make sure, family, is that uh, whenever I switch the different files from just, um, you know, everything is all set to where it automatically switches. Um, so what I wasn't uh, able to show everybody before was the top of the... Uh, the 99 year lease. Okay. So, um, so yeah, because I think what was being shown was just the website files. Uh, go ahead, uh, Ada. No, I, I, if you needed more time, I was just going to explain to them what the 99 year lease means. Uh, perfect. Uh, you know, you can do that while I add the scroll, and um, okay. individuals can look at the lease while I scroll through. Okay. So in Ghana, um, the land is actually, it's, it's sold as a lease um, and not as a purchase. So typically speaking, um, you are leasing the land for 99 years. Um, and in this particular case, the chief has, um, because if you're Ghanaian, you lease it for 99 years. If you're non-Ghanaian, you can lease it from 50 years all the way to 99 years. Uh, but this chief has, um, because of the relationship that he has with Bomani um, and, and his group, um, has been able to say, okay, we're going to give you the Ghanaian um, leasing agreement, which is 99 years. So um, there will be some sort of a, um, a method by which, after nine, 99 years, there will be a method by which we hope that it, it um, renews itself. Um, and then he was saying that, you know, maybe if we're in a community and um, we work together, perhaps in the future, then we can help rewrite some of those rules that are in place in terms of the land lease. Yes? Uh, uh, absolutely. Um, uh, thank you for going through uh, the different in, in the lease. Uh, because that's one of the main things that um, you want clarity on. And um, as Ada explained, um, so I'll pull up the details that way you can uh, see it in writing. And uh, uh, the 99 year lease and the MOU is the documents that you receive and it shows us working on what we agreed on working on. And then uh, I'm gonna scroll to the very bottom to let you see. Uh, uh, once all of this is stamped and approved, you just uh, submit your corporation and your paperwork and then that's how you get your land then indenture. So um, we're just moving forward in, the, in that process where we have all, we're going to have all of the legal things in place this summer, uh, clear the land, and then you can, you know, uh, the main thing we always want to know is like, um, you know, we're ready to build, but, you know, um, to avoid the drama of just getting ready to build, uh, you handle and make sure your lease is good, all your paperwork is good, all your deals are contract, um, you monitor the situation, have people working for you, and you just cover yourself as best as possible. I'm going to switch to there and uh, this is one of those long documents. I'll show you the, like the one of the table of contents. So this is the kind of things that we have set up. As a matter of fact, I'll just show you the table of contents since it's all brief. Uh, but this is the bylaws, which you'll see on the uh, website also. It looks a little different since. Okay, we don't see it. We still see the MOU. 
I still see the MOU so that yeah. you can see the manual on your lease. What is this thing doing? All right, so no point to sell the uh, other lease. Yeah. Let me share. Trying to get this thing to auto, auto switch and yeah. I'm not sure why it's not doing it. So while he's working on that, Bomani, uh, let me talk about the citizenship question. There's a question about citizenship. Can I go with that while you're working on that? Oh, sure, absolutely. Okay, so um, I know that it, it is a very popular question that people ask about citizenship to, to Ghana and to African nations in general. Um, to get to this land, to buy land in Ghana, you do not need to be a citizen. Um, my suggestion is, that you visit the country. And um, when you are applying for a visa though, you apply for a multi-entry visa, which is a five-year visa and allows you to be in the country six um, six, 60 days at a time. So you can go and stay 60 days, but then you have to leave and then come back and stay 60 days and then you have to leave. Or you can get an extension um, and get residency, but but the beauty of working with a group as opposed to working in, in, as an individual in this particular case is that when you have a group that's already settled in the community, then you can petition for immigration to to facilitate the process of citizenship. You're there, you have your home, you're a community, um, uh, I, and I think that you know by doing it that way, it's it's sort of an an easier process, but it has to be done right. Um, so um, citizenship is something that can happen, um, but it certainly um, has a better opportunity to happen if you're on the ground already and you have uh, established um, a community, so. And, uh, perfect, and I'm gonna click on, I'm um, uh, so I do apologize for, uh, I guess everyone I've seen the MOU, so that's good. Um, and I'm just trying to make sure that I put up this 99 year lease real quick. Um, so that's um, what uh, I can't hear him no more. I'm trying to hear him. I cannot hear him no more. I've been muted. Uh, yes, we're all mute. Well, muting is, it, you should be able to hear. Muting is only so that we don't hear you, not that you don't hear. So turn up your volume or. As a matter of fact, I'm just gonna go back to the website. It's the easiest thing to share because the auto change. And so family, what I was looking to do is trying to share some additional documents with you, which was uh, the memorandum of understanding MOU and the 99 year lease. Uh, so that's something that we usually just send as an email, um, something that we don't want to put on the, uh, the uh, website. Uh, but it gives you clear cut uh, to see a legal agreement signed stamp of what's being agreed upon, um, so that way we all know what's going on and we're all clear. Uh, so those are the things when you you start asking people questions. Uh, can I get this? Can I get this document? <laughs> they start coming up with all kind of, 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 of tales to tell you. But honestly, if people can't provide these information for you, um, then you definitely should not, not do any business with them. And then also uh, another thing too, you know, you need a legal representation that covers the people that are doing what they're doing, and cover you know, and all parties are covered. So it makes it um, more realistic and in order. Uh, so. You know, so these things you see us, uh, we're, we're showing you is like everything stamp, seal, date, and then you're track, tracking the progress of when the, the dates are happening and you know you can kind of see if people are serious. So I always tell people like, show me some kind of track record of what's going on. And the better we can kind of raise the bar with each other, then we can create a level of black excellence to where business is done at, at the highest level and it's organized and it's uh, in phase and you know, you can fix any little, little issues and communicate. So 
uh, that's kind of also the challenge now based on you know um, our experience of this traveling to Africa um, you know, the last 16 years it's, it's one of those situations where uh, you literally just want to make sure that uh, you create um, a level of information where you know people are interested in what you're looking to do because you have more people looking to live and do business in Africa but you see a you know you kind of see a record or you just see a flow of you know and it's based on the people that's on YouTube and the quick complaining about many things uh, so we just offer a kind of another way that people could process repatriation uh, I know a lot of times we want to do things on our own and which is fine because you know we can always have people represent people but I think ultimately beyond anything you just have to have, to have some level of representation and that's what people sometimes don't lack or don't have uh, so our goal is to be your representation and uh, this kind of work that says real estate management and uh, and development can do at as best as possible come from a standpoint of building a foundation and working consistently and uh, not come up with any reasons or excuses so part of uh, the main point after all those documentation, um, as we show you more in the overview, is the prime objective, which is basically to develop and maintain a sustainable repatriation and Pan-African community. And the goal also is to literally uh, do it at the highest level. And it's all based on individuals in the community, which are doing all the work and are organizing. And so as you read, as you read through uh, all of the, the you know, you know, the, the um, different categories or the different uh, overview of information in the paragraph. It's uh, going right to point as we try to cover as much information as possible. Uh, so it's honestly, you know, nothing personal. I tell people it's uh, telling you who's welcome and who's not welcome into the community. And uh, it also is uh, reaffirming the foundation of what we do in the first 15 acres. And so the additional things I talk about, uh, medical center, community center, office building, uh, general education uh, building, uh, communal farm. These are all things that um, as time evolved, you know, these things will be more materialized. And uh, with uh, um, all of the presentation is just trying to just cover as much as possible and uh, show you that there's a lot of things that we're doing is gonna be in a growth stage and it's you know the growth of everything is honestly literally determined by the people that are participating so it's one of those things where you just tell the individuals that it's um everything is based on us and we determine how it works and uh it's you know it's a basic standard mo uh, model of um and you know, uh, same as this corporate economics or we just uh, just organizing and uh, maintaining an operation and, and as you you talk about things like that then you want to know when you run a community, you're going to need a, a business enterprise because it's one of those things where you want to partake in the world of business enterprise. Because I mentioned earlier that um, we don't own certain things. So it's like the only move that I ever thought about making from here since we can't have access to the paradise of what we want is to literally build it. So that's what you're doing with enterprising yourself at the highest level. So here we have a tech center. So it's a business technology service support consultation and things like that. So, um, the, you know, it's, it's like all the things that you're doing now that you're proficient at, uh, you have to think about it and think about all the different committees because all the committees are going to be enterprises that you're looking to, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things that will be hard for me to believe that um, any more than maybe 1% of black people from America will live and do business, will live in Africa or repatriate. repatriate. So you're thinking about 90 plus percent of people will stay here, especially those who have business and things like that. What you're doing is you're reaching out and let them know that you have a whole staff of people from young uh, trainees, uh, teenagers, and then these are all of the ridiculous amount of services you have as if it was your, as it's your own conglomerate. So it's, um, it's a small foundation that expands into unlimited potential. And it's kind of like you're working yourself out of the box that, um, that the system puts you in here and limits every single aspect of what you're looking to build. Uh, it's literally a lot to process, ponder, think about, but uh, you, you're like, you, you know, you're, you, you know, you're like just literally honestly just comparing, like, like you know, like it's, your, you're comparing this to other experience that you have, like the current American experience in 2020 that, that no one will ever forget, all the 
all the mad uh, drama that's going off consistently. Um, but you literally can compare like, you know, what if I was in paradise and what if we owned our own gas station, own our own this, and what if all the money come back to us and we're able to invest more in the country of Ghana, we're able to work with our community and our neighbors uh, more, we're able to build better relationship and we're able to raise the standard of all of us as a people, our way of life, and not just thinking about ourselves. What if, you know, all of those are possible? So it begins to be a situation where you're trying to lay this information out as we go from the top to the bottom to where anyone can kind of process to and then kind of get to where they feel like, you know, yeah, this, this, this can work for me and I can make, I can give my energy also. And if you have 50 to 200 people giving a certain energy, uh, you're in a win-win situation. The issue here is always that we either never get to do it or when we do it, bad things happen or, you know, many different, a few different options. But this is a situation where you're putting all up in a situation, in a condition, and a community to where, you know, it's, uh, numerous things uh, literally complement each other as I move. And the building and buying homes is everyone will be able to have a flexible option to bring in their own builders or get what they want to design based on what will fit on the property. Everything just has to be neat, nice, and organized as we look to carve the same thing in the community as far as making it gravel right away and you know, just laying things out to where it could be just looking like a more professional organized uh, area. Um, a lot of times you see these kind of development and things look like I have some videos that show us walking through Garvey Town, the beginning in the first 20 plots and it's like the worst chaotic construction scene ever. It's like, yeah, you know, it's one of those things here you know, when you get some people that write codes and things like that, this, they're, right, they're writing, writing you up for all kinds of things. You got nails everywhere. You got half-built buildings that are falling apart and things like that. And, you know, it's, um, sometimes it takes you experiencing that with other people to realize that, you know, we have to be find a better way to do that. So that's also one of the, the goals as far as even working with the people that do the construction and things. You know, you're creating a real contract, but like you contract and real deal uh, to where you don't want those things to happen to where people are work, people are selling you materials and then it's bad or things don't work out like that because those were some of the things I remember in the Garvey Time video that I recorded. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of like uh, we're, we're creating a fresh new processes and that's what I learned from when I first started business, um, even just from remembering the worthless uh, business classes at the university, you know, that you have to practically get into the way of life of, of whatever business that you're looking to be the best or organize and then just learn all facets of it and engage yourself and you know and go to the trials and tribulation and go through certain things because that's what builds you to where you come up with a great idea so even for folks who are getting their own builders and things like that our goal is to create a report to where we can you know you can have your, your spreadsheet set up your itemization uh your contract your deals and that uh where to get certain things and because that's that is the purpose honestly of uh, all the committees that we have it's based on all facets of life and how we can literally work in different spectrum of management phase and complete the whole project. So it's project management and organization at the highest level, but you're using the people that are part of that community to feel invested in what they're doing. So you figure that you know, since we all putting our money in, all of us will want the best from the community. So you just even, you know, even psychologically add those things into the mix of everything. And, um, try to open things to where people feel flexible. Now, one of the things is when you look at the membership rules and code of conduct, I know it's like a lot of things on there, but I'm just gonna scroll through um, as, and then, you know, it's one of those things you can take your time and look through. And then we give you an email copy of the uh, overview and the bylaws, which covers 100% of what I'm going through. And you can just have your own PDF and print and sign when you feel comfortable. So some even basic things on there that people may, you know, may not necessarily uh, always uh, just think about, but it's something, you know, it's just the basic of fundamentals. And sometimes you can't take it for granted that people have home training, you know, no dis disrespect to everyone, you know, to, to anyone, but it's like, you know, it's a different aspect of those things based on culture. Uh, so you get back to where you're trying to, lay out as many things even when we get there and we have to learn the local language or when we have to learn to interact you're not taking anything for granted that anyone is just like a master of african culture it's like all of us can learn certain things so why not just 
keep everything simple. And the same thing I deal with when I deal with people that travel with me, just lay that in a simple format so the most advanced and simplest person can still understand it and um, and you know keep you know keep uh, mind open for all questions. Uh, this next thing is the membership application. So as I scroll through it. And excuse me for those who are watching it and seeing it go by fast. And it's a little bit just do an overview. It looks long, but uh, it's four pages, but it's very short. Once you start writing it, you'll be finished in a few minutes. And let me leave that there and see. That's perfect. And uh, Ada, I got a quick question. Uh, can you see my phase two uh, ready getting started page? I just want to make sure it's switching. <laughs> yes, I can see. I can see your face on the email. Is that what you mean? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, and you see the email. Exactly. Uh, so you'll yeah, find it easier to switch the pages from when it's on the website itself and to yeah. different uh, versus if you have PDF files or additional attachments on the uh, screen sharing. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that kind of thing, we can send it to them in the email. They can look at it, but, but it's better for us to just focus on the stuff that's available. That's cool. Perfect, family. So this is um, uh, what you see uh, in the overview, what I'm going to, is also what you're going to see uh, that's sent via email. Uh, that way, it's uh, in those formats also. And I even have, you know, WhatsApp information that text people, uh, you know, so people in all different spectrum can be at their comfort level of viewing information. But let me switch back to the membership application. Um, and also um, more information is uh, communicated about on the very last link, which is called Getting Started. And uh, it talks about the membership application and other things. But uh, the email I show you is a, a relevant link to the things that we have organized to where we put it in an email to where you just um, have everything in clarity there. Uh, all right, so the one of the main things I like to share with, with everyone that's doing anything with me is videos and photos. And I am absolutely one of those um, uh, people who record everything, just like literally everything. Uh, so we travel around the country and we're going to see the land uh, recorded. I still don't believe how it came out to that many videos, but it, came out to 17 videos and then also have seven conference call on this YouTube video list where you, when you click on it, it's going to load uh, to the YouTube page. It's not going to load to this main page, um, but it will load to the Black Star Repatriation and Pan-African Community link. And I have that link uh, set up to where once you click on it, opens up and you can look at the last conference calls. Uh, none of them are going to say conference call, but if you read the description, it tells you what they are. But they're titled in different areas to basically explain the foundation of what we're doing. Like the first conference call we did was an overview. The next one was a vision. Other one was land search. The next one was documentation and preparation. Other one was moving forward with what we agreed on. And the next one was uh, the site plan and layout and getting people to commit to plots. And the last one that we did was committees and strategies. So um, it's probably kind of a lot of information and things, but you're literally showing everyone. And as I scroll down, you'll see the begin. Uh, the further you scroll down, you'll see the actual original videos. Not, sorry, not original videos, but once you go past all the conference calls, you'll see the first thing I say, meeting all the way down to the one at the beach. So uh, these are not that uh, long of a clip. I did my best to start, stop, and create segments based on the information. Even have a two minute and 50 second of uh, me explaining my purpose. Um, again, I tell people I'm not a public speaker. I try my best to communicate, but um, you know, as a person that's specialized in technology, everything with me is written. So if I tell people, if you, if you didn't understand what I said, or if I sound like I have an accent, or if I repeat certain words, uh, it's just, you know, my best is trying to learn uh, uh, American English. Uh, it's sometimes a little different for when you're born in a certain country. Uh, you know, I hear people say when you're born here and you try to learn American English, you may still talk a certain way. Uh, so I never take anything for granted. And I definitely don't take it personal. Um, I, I'm, a, you know, I'm, a, I'm a tech support person and I've been insulted in tech centers saying that I need somebody to speak English to talk to. You sound like you have an accent. 
that was always my favorite one. Uh, and you know, and I said, no problem, ma'am, no disrespect, I, have no, I don't feel no hard way. Let me, you know, get somebody else that can help you. And you know, it's one of those things. So you know, you, you're trying your best to do clarity. That's what I tell people, if you have any questions, if you want to talk, I want clarity, let's talk and go through certain things. Because sometimes you may say, you, may, you know, you talk fast, like you have a fast New York accent or, and things like that. So different people from different backgrounds that speak English may hear different things. Uh, so that's the importance of everything being typed up and writing. And the video, I always think, you know, we all do, do our best, including the chief. You can hear his accent, Ghanaian accent, to try our best to talk. Uh, but I also advise people when you listen to the video, since we all have different accents, uh, everything is in English, but just take your time also and just try to, because that's one thing you're going to have to do when we get to Ghana. You have to kind of just, when you're talking to certain people, um, and the same thing with yourself, you may have to slow down also. But it's all a way how all of us can get to understand each other, distinction of accent. And I have people in my group from the UK and different parts and different countries and different islands. And it's, you know, one of those things. And it's one of those things that we realize and how divided we are, we are as a people. But these are some... Uh, some wonderful videos because this was a, one of those wonderful ceremonies that um, you know it was just I guess when you see things on videos different but when you experience it, it was like oh, all right this it's good to actually connect with the people that are actually the foundation of the project uh, so that was like one of those uh, day that was a uh, uh, great and I was able to capture it on a nice 4k HD so it's uh, if you have a 4k TV it shows you great picture you can actually feel uh, like you can like walk into the picture or like touch it based on how high tech your uh, TV is. Uh, so that's the goal is to record things in the highest level of technology. That way you can see it because sometimes we, a lot of people won't get a chance to see the land right away. So everything we're going to do is kind of get like when it's being cleared, when the houses are being built. You know, this is the playlist that I've literally the, the whole log of the life of the, the, the project. And that's what we plan on doing. Uh, so as long as people have an issue with sitting there watching these videos. The good thing about this, you know, you have a button that say play all, or you can click on one section and start. Like if you start from meeting, uh, it will just play all the way down to when we see the land, when you know, we're on the beach. And it's the same thing for the other link when you click on the Facebook. Um, it goes right to our um, page. Uh, this is a public membership page and it um, has a whole lot of members. I'm trying to see where is my members member count. It's usually right in front of me. Uh, but uh, we have uh, several hundred uh, people as far as membership on it. But the main thing what I'm looking to, to make to keep doing is to set up the photos and certain videos on here. Videos are all on YouTube, but certain videos that may, I may not put on Facebook. Like if um, um, uh, you now you get one or two phone videos usually put on there. So that's all that is. Um, but it's interesting because we, you know, we have other videos on there. So the main thing is that you click on album and then from album, you're gonna see the, uh, the Garvey Town uh, one from that project that we, we were working on. And just to show history, and it's one of those things that I didn't like to show people where we come from and our struggle and not just delete it and, and try to forget it because you're struggling. The things that you go through is also part of how you pave in the future because you know, it teaches you a lot when you deal with things that don't work out perfect. Uh, so click on that and lots of photos and like I was telling you that that's what we do. We just take a lot of photos and pictures. So I'm showing you a flow of the photos to where you see us as a group, this normal brothers and sisters, this on our repatriation connection, just taking photos, talking, meeting uh, folks. And you see the kind of people that we have, this people, you know, us, you know, I saw our community say us and, and with a more focused mindset than anything else. And we scroll down to the land. And and uh, the video is going to show a different path that we take took. But one of the main things uh, is that the next time we see the land, the front will be cleared. It will be graded. Uh, so that's what I'm also um, working towards. So people can say, yeah, I remember when we walked there the, the back way and, and everything. And as you can see, myself right there with a the camera while and my other brothers uh, take photos. Just showing a different view of it.
And, and so um, for those who everyone does join the page and, and what it does, once you um, a member of the uh, page, uh, we just, it's all public information. So all we're doing is just adding and adding uh, more people. And uh, right now members are 557. So what you're doing in that sense is you know, you're creating something you're sharing with the public that this is what you're working on. And you know, they're, they're the judge and see what goes on because you're sharing with them all the updates. Uh, uh, that way, you know, people may even five years from now, they, if we have still have land and still have opportunities in that area. They can literally just see that you know this is something that I've seen grown and I've seen I've seen the reality in front of my my eyes, and it's not just something that I found out about and I jumped right into. So for some people, it may be a, a earlier commitment, and others uh, may wait. And so that's what we mainly have set up as far as uh, this page right here. And uh, and you'll see a few comments. Uh, this one is the same vid video um, log that I have. Uh, you click on it, and it just shows you all of the YouTube videos of the uh, project. So I remember when we just used it. You know, we only had, as a matter of fact, remember when we had uh, no fo uh, no uh, videos uh, at all. And uh, when you do the search, another thing may come up. Um, the whole the the Garvey Town project project that we did, uh, all of those videos are in another video log. Uh, so when people do searches, they may see certain things. Let's make sure everything stay up. Say a uh, black star. Uh, and then you know, naturally, once you see the dates, uh, you see a modern day date. But uh, 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 and uh, I made sure that I just didn't take it personal and delete any of the videos because the videos, you know, I even go back and look at them. It shows the growth of minds and everything. And it shows what opened up more of our mind, the seeing what you can do, but other people don't want uh, certain people to, you know, uh, you know, we're not here to take over anybody project. Uh, as, as speaking with the people that we have dealt with before, uh, your goal is always to connect with more people, just like the people uh, or the group I'm talking to and I've talked to before. Uh, that's never our you know, idea and mindset because that makes no sense that we take it that way. We as a people have to put our resources together and make it work for our future generations. And that's what I was always willing to do with Fianca and also um, uh, Garvey Town. Uh, being a person that knows a lot of people and can organize big groups of people, basically just bring them the, 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 the people that are open and interested. But then when you realize that people can't take care of the business and everything, and it's going to put you in a fire and make you look bad, which I've, I've had to just work many things out because I'm stuck in the, in, the, in the middle. And so this is our maturity and our growth as far as uh, taking it to that level. So, um, you know, people will see this page because this page actually goes back to when we titled it Garvey Town. So just to be honest with everyone, that's, Kind of what you did you created the best transaction as an you know as a as a group managing investment to say we're just changing everything over and moving forward right and uh so all links are there for the videos and everything else and i mentioned earlier the, the uh, bylaws i should have just showed everybody uh, from uh, this point of view but this is uh, what's on the site, and you can scroll down. It'll be the same document you receive that uh, you have to sign. But for the people that are, you know, that um, we don't have access to email and things like that, and we just you know waiting for everything to be clear, it gives you a chance to be able to look at information clearly right away without having to, you know, be pre-committed to anything via getting emails or things like that. And let me just hit the main page back. So again, family, these are the list of documents that we have gone through right there on your screen. And we went through all of these in a brief format. Uh, so you can imagine when you're ready to take a look at it, it's gonna take you some time to read through it and look through it. Uh, but at the same time too, you're getting all of the information up front and then you're getting other information to come in. Just like when we do the ne next conference call and after you look through all of this, everything in the next conference call make more uh, sense because we're moving in phases of, of a complete de development within three to five years. And so the last thing is uh, getting started, and that's what I showed for the email earlier. And here you see the, the group of us that organized the project, and you see right there the name of uh, all of us. Um, our brother Kwabna, which is our consultant, uh, the surveyor, and all, both of those two guys to the left, myself in the middle in the white shirt, the chief in the kente cloth, and our attorney in the blue. And this page is just to give clarity of the land costs and what's included. Um, and 
As I was telling everyone, um, it said note individual land survey or individual registration is not included in administration or land cost. And then naturally uh, your building permit is not uh, included in these things. And anything dealing with development, additional money and game plan will be created to where we can just work it all out. As you crunch the numbers and the bigger group you have, everything is, a, it seems like so much less with a bigger group as I've been learning since we've been moving with a group of 50 that we have. Uh, give you clarity of the uh, land price and um, the uh, size of land. And then also get, letting you know that we've added uh, land clearing to where we have a certain amount of money to make sure that um, everyone gets taken care of for clearing the land. They do the best job and they set it up to where we can get it organized, laid out, graveled, and set up to where you know we can now just build a foundation and, and, and it's just trying to process these as the months go by. And here's just mention options for payments and things like that. And the only thing that uh, is uh, ever required to move forward and to secure future plots is a minimum deposit of uh, $500, which is your administrative cost. And then uh, once you see more things that you need clarity of, and then also it's a thing to set you to, to pay for it within six months. So if we start in August, um, sorry, since we start collecting now in uh, June, um, the goal is to have everything ready for you in two months and also uh, six months uh, later to have it paid for. But we're working, all those things is just, we're working uh, it out in detail. So individuals that are coming on could have more time uh, up to even next year. And it's not a rush to accept payment, but, um, and you want, uh, and no one has to rush into uh, certain payments because your goal is to show everyone what you're working on, just like we showed phase one, what we're working on, and then send in the financial report. And once individuals have those things, and they see everything that we agree on, then we can get the balance and move forward. Uh, so uh, just re recommend everyone pace themselves and don't feel pressure for anything. And, um, and you know, if people wanna do more, they can do more. Once we receive payment, everything is sent in a receipt saying that we're, we received this amount of money for, for, you know, for, you know, for a standby plot in phase two as we create a site plan. And then when a the site plan is created, um, You'll be able to pick your number from 100 to the amount of plots that we have, maybe about 120. Uh, so that's um, what that's getting into as far as the uh, cost and what's not included. And then you scroll down to getting started and it's just going back to let you know, and this, every aspect of this page rep represent what you see in the email and all the documents that it talks about, you have attachments of those documents on the uh, email. So you have uh, from background check uh, to signature page to passport style folder to membership application. And um, it just shows you how to send it all in and um, organize it in one email. And then once we get a deposit, we lock you in and then we move to the next phase of things. And then we go from a point of being uh, public uh, to more private. So that's, uh, and the, all the group pages are set in WhatsApp. So everyone has each, everyone can see each other's profile and be able to send a message and those of us that are in group, if we need to communicate, we can communicate. And it just organize and connect all of us together, first as a group and then next as committees and, and then as individuals. And you're working that as the best way to, you know, for everybody to get to know each other uh, as best as possible. The other thing that we do have is, and it's say right here, uh, and this is a private group that we have. Uh, it's say our committees for Black Star Pan-African Community. So some people are not on Facebook and some people have no um, idea going on Facebook. So we don't take it personal, but we do want everyone to at least be able to open themselves to being on WhatsApp because when you're trying to do the kind of organizing we're doing uh, and people are emailing, people are communicating each other via call and text, and WhatsApp create a complete platform where all of us can communicate and work on those things. So a lot of times um, I have groups uh, travel with me and we're communicating and sending updates and answering questions. And the same thing as far as this uh, different people that's uh, interested in, 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 in what we are progressing in as far as the community, whether they're talking to me individually first and or, or still after they join a group. And you're just kind of setting those things up on one uh, platform to where wherever we are, whether we're traveling in this country or in Ghana or here in the U.S., uh, everyone will be able to have direct access to us. Uh, so that's the, the main way out. Uh, once we all connect some more, we'll be able to set things up. Okay. And uh, you know, also have our attorney and our our consultant and, and and a few more people on those are group pages. 
So it's really just a unique way to really connect all of us. And family, we're I'm looking for the last set of things. All right, so getting started. So what I'm gonna do is just go back to this page and show everybody one, you know, one more time. This is what we went over, uh, these details. And um, so what we can do, um, if everyone is uh, ready, we can open things for questions and I'll do my best to go through, as, uh, go through everything as best as possible. And I'm open to any question, honestly, because you know, it's a foundation we build and the more we learn about what we need to do, the more we can put it in progress. Okay, so, so um, there is a question that I, um, um, that Kathy asked, Kathy Hodge. She wants to know what happens to our money if we can't leave the U.S.? You can't leave the U.S. forever. The goal is for you to leave the U.S., uh, but your goal is to organize things for you as best as possible there until you get to Ghana. So I'll so, say work the long-term plan. I'll so in it. other words, you don't have to be in Ghana to get the land. Um, exactly. You don't have to get into Ghana. And what I'm doing is I'm being your representation to make sure that lawyer business everything is handled and being your, your, your main person alone, the, the staff of people that we have uh, to this, honestly, just handle <laughs> a complex situation like that where, you know, where it's, your goal is to feel like it's, it's simple because, you know, your goal is to feel like you know the people, like I know everybody that I'm talking to here and all my partners and people that we have money and business all together, other, even other business that we do together to, to be clear that, you know, all of us working together is going to get it done because, you're honestly looking at a situation where you you're saying that there's we, we don't have any road blocks we don't have any like we don't have nothing stopping us from doing what we're talking about doing and the people in ghana um the chief of the land they're not uh, everyone is open uh and that's why i say that it's kind of it's it's like one of those situations where we have to get out of america as much of us who can because the things that we can literally do and put our money together uh, is unbelievable it's just that we spend so much time trying to fight for social justice and fight fight equality and everything in America and, 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 and reparations. I'm not saying that we shouldn't fight uh, for any of those things because we absolutely should, but it don't need 100% of our whole population in America to fight for that. Uh, so I believe one of the people are like the one percenters that believe in Africa and want to connect with uh, the rest of the people that maybe are one percent of the population or even less and say, hey, uh, what if we did this 50 years ago? We'd have a metropolis of things going on in the African continent, and we probably wouldn't have all this confusion of us being from so many different places to just us being one African citizen, one, one, one group of Africans uh, from just the African world. And it's, uh, I'm not saying I ever, it will ever get that simple, but when we've been divided and conquered, it's like, you know, you know, you have to go back to a process where, you know, you have to be able to just build, fixing that situation, just like that 99-year lease. It's like the chief, the chief signed off that, you know, he's doing his best to recognize us as a people returning and not as foreigners. And then we're doing our best to do the same thing too. And, you know, I don't think it should take 99 years, at least to fix, years to fix that, to do away with all the situations to where um, a lot of the, you know, a lot of the, the unnecessary paperwork, uh, which is usually in place to protect us as a people, is now not as set as it is because all of us are now one nation of people working for one benefit of uh, United, uh, you know, a strong Africa with uh, whatever support and connection we have with anything else black outside of the African continent and making that a part of the African continent. Not saying it's ever that simple, uh, but, um, you know, because folks uh, in African Union have been talking about things like that for a long time, but right. I don't always believe that the people have the power and the people have to organize themselves and get what it takes and a group of uh, politicians and bureaucrats will continue to play games because they're evil, easily conned and they, they will never understand the, the true feeling of people who are on a grassroots level, who go through the stuff that the average people go through every day. Um, and us, 1% uh, of those people are the ones that have the resources, the energy to say, hey, we can actually change the game of that. And then when we talk to any bureaucrat, politician, or anybody that we're dealing with, we kind of do the same strategy that I've kind of been doing where you put your yourself in a position uh, of respect and business to be able to close the deal. And it's because, you know, what you're getting everybody to, to understand is that you, we can, you know, once 
we build that foundation, we can close any deal that we want and build anything that we want. It's just us never being able to get uh, the foundation built. But um, um, yeah, from that family, let me just open things up for questions and not uh, talk too much. So, so I, I wanted to just clarify that the answer to that question is, is that you don't actually have to, you have to at some point be able to travel outside the U.S. But if you feel like you um, um, cannot, and, and, and we're talking outside of uh, the COVID-19, um, if you have a problem that you can't get a passport, then you can't go to Ghana, period, right? Because if the, if the government is not allowing you a passport, you can't travel. But if you're saying that because right now there are no planes going to Ghana, that's something different. And if you're saying that, okay, what if I can't travel because, um, um, I, I don't know, if, if the government decides that nobody can go anywhere, then nobody can go anywhere. But, um, but if you're trying to build something in Ghana and, and not going there to do it, he's saying that you can do that. There are measures in place to help you put a house on the land that you purchase. Okay, we, we got all of that. That's fine. All those words are, are fine. But what we're trying to say, my wife and I, is that there's a 60, uh, 60 day turnaround, right? Where we have to apply for a visa again, correct? Is that no. right? No. So well, you, you, you get a visa um, before you travel. And if you are traveling next month, you apply for a visa this month. You get a five year visa if you get a multiple entry visa five years. In that five years, you are allowed to travel 60 days at a time, nonstop, without having to come back or without having to reissue a visa. So that means that in five years, you can go as many times as you want, but you cannot stay in the country consecu consecutively for more than 60 days. If you stay 61, 65 days, then that's an issue. But if you go, you're staying 60 days, you know you have to leave and come back. You can go to Togo and come back in. You can go to Cote d'Ivoire and come back into Ghana. Right. But right. you that's cannot my, that's, stay for longer. Well, that's, that's, my, that's my, you've just answered a critical pre, uh, question. Yeah. Because what I'm saying is if we go there and somehow they don't allow us back, into the states for whatever reason. Um, now that you're telling me that we can go to another country in Africa and come back, is, is that allowed? So we just don't want to be put out where we don't have nowhere to go. Is my point. Okay, I, I I don't think that anybody can determine what the federal government does. I mean, we as Africans that have, we're in a more sensitive position than you all are because I have a passport that's an American passport but I'm a natural lie citizen. I'm not born here. So I am, if, I, if, if something happened that I wasn't allowed in the country, it would be because of my status as a, a non-born citizen of the United States. You, as a citizen of the United States, born and raised in the United States, there is nothing that any government can say that will ever say to you that you cannot ever come back home. There is nothing that any president, you, this is your home. You have the right as an American citizen to come home, period. There's nothing that can change that. For me, if I am caught doing something illegally, I may have my citizen strip, uh, citizenship stripped and I may not be able to come back in this country. You, because you were born here, there are different set of rules. So in terms of that, let's put that aside. That's the American side. Let's talk about the Africa side. The African nations, one of the reasons why they have this visa process is because each country has to make their own um, deals with the US, okay? The reason why it's visas are around because countries want to make sure they know who's coming to their borders. 
And the U.S. often has these agreements with certain countries. Okay, we'll let your citizens come to the U.S. They can stay 30 days if you let our citizens do the same. Um, in the Gambia, for instance, American citizens have to pay for a visa. French citizens, British citizens don't have to pay for a visa. Even um, citizens of, um, I, I think it was uh, um, Brussels, I believe it's Brussels. They don't, they don't even have to bring their passports. They go directly with an ID card. So, so because the governments of those countries have negotiated with America to allow these visa process to be like that. So if America was to negotiate a visa process with Ghanaians or Cam Cameroonians, that would mean that somehow those people from those countries could be able to come here without having to go through the visa process. America's not gonna do that. So, mm -hmm. so Ghana though, because it is an open country, has to regulate who comes into their borders. That's their rule. And we have to abide by each country's rules. Senegal, if you're traveling to Senegal, you don't need a visa. Um, and there are other countries like Morocco, you don't need a visa. I don't know if you need a visa for South Africa, you don't need a visa. But, but for Ghana, they're asking, we need to know who you are. So you go and apply for a visa. We need to know that uh, we're gonna give you five years. You can come back and forth if you want. Um, in those five years, you could stay 60 days at a time. If you're building a home and you're going back and forth, at some point, you're gonna have to ask for citizenship or um, residency. And that's another process that you have to go through. Okay, and, and this is not, it, you coming back to the U.S. has nothing to do with Ghana. You coming back to the U.S. has everything to do with the U.S., but what I'm telling you as an American citizen, you will have to, you would have to be a terrorist or something like that for you not to be allowed into the U.S. That, I've never heard of an American citizen not being allowed into the U.S. unless they found them in Syria fighting with Syrians. So, okay. I hope that answers that question. That's good enough. Yeah, perfect, okay. well explained. And let me other answer the, the direct part of uh, the person's question. Uh, you get your money back uh, if you literally can't get to the country. Uh, like if America does literally have you in a situation where you, your passport uh, is expired and it won't, you can't get your passport, um, you, know, you can't get another passport because of whatever situation that's in, you did anything. Uh, then the answer to that is literally to this, give your money back and just have someone else take that uh, plot. Uh, and, uh, or, or in general, if you get something done, uh, you know, you, the goal is to literally just sell everything to someone else. And for us to do that, because uh, we're your representation and then just get you your money back as best as we uh, can. Uh, so, you know, just look into this, um, uh, that's not uh, written anywhere, anywhere, but it's literally, and it's even something that we can even put in writing, but it's literally the setup that you have when you have your um, your, your cancellation policy. Um, and you know, it's just the same thing if um, someone can't come to a country, uh, you don't want to buy a ticket for them and, and things like that. So, uh, you know, those are things that we naturally just um, going to look out for someone to where people are not losing money and what they invest in they actually get because that's how we actually build this based on the highest success rate of people getting what they want. So uh, a question from Robert Reed, um, are you able to sublease? Uh, yes, but it's uh, since we have these strict policies, the people have to be clear on all of the policies that we have. And uh, it's a situation where they have to uh, qualify for membership, just like um, uh, when we set up certain uh, people at their bed and breakfast set up, you just can't invite just anyone that's not on, that's on the list of people that can't be invited. So, um, you know, you know, so it, you know, that's another thing that uh, individuals have to just be clear on. Uh, it's not a situation that, you know, you can just, um, just build a bunch of houses and just rent it out to a group of, um, you know, a, a group of white Indians, you know, uh, from out, uh, East India. Um, so, you know, um, that's all in place. Okay. All right. Another question from um, Joylene Tomlin. Can you choose where to buy land or is it there at a particular area set aside? 
uh, once we have um, a sitemap for the 50 acres, you just, you, it's a situation where we're creating and, and drawing a sitemap based on what we acquire. And you pick your plots, uh, just like uh, the map that I showed uh, earlier on the website, uh, 1 to 50. And then if you're somebody that say you want a resort, or you want to build a construction company, or you want to build a manufacturer, or you just want to have five acres of land, but you like the area, then it's a separate deal that we have to do for you and work out you know, those things in separate paperwork. But what we did was kind of organize a deal where we have one set of paperwork and it reduces the cost of paying legal fees and the different fees because it's being done as a group. But the answer to your question directly uh, is yes. Uh, we're looking to be able to represent anyone who needs representation uh, to you know, build their dreams. And we feel that this land right here that's been, you know, it's been perfect for us. Uh, it gives us a good chance to build everything from the ground up. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so we're going back to the commercial aspect. Um, will there be, and this is from Gail, um, will there be commercial hotels owned by us built for our communities? As far as that, um, we'd have to agree to that. That's something that we have to put our money together. As far as our community, uh, we, you know, we'll have space for the guests that we have coming to, you know, may live there for six months or so, may come here to work a certain program or, or, or teach or train or do certain things. Uh, but as far as the hotel, that's uh, one, of the, one of those investments that we have, have to honestly just come together as a group of people and say, this is how we're going to put our money together and actually get a hotel built on a separate piece of land and, uh, and things like that. But we okay. do our best to set up a nice little apartment system on phase two where people can even just rent for a little bit while they get certain things done. Okay. Um, so can you just review again um, the cost of a typical home? And we talked about this before. The cost of building a home on the land and what we're, what we're looking at for um, construction options, contractor options. Uh, yes, uh, there's really no def uh, uh, defined uh, price. But uh, some of the numbers that you're working with um, talked about forty um, to sixty thousand dollars, or more so thirty to sixty thousand dollars. And what you're doing is from two, three, four bedroom houses uh, to you know whether it's one floor, two floor, and um, whether it's um, uh, two bathrooms or three bathrooms. And the goal is just to create a, a builders list where we have different builders, we have different things itemized and different style of building, and kind of just organize it to where someone who's looking to choose a home can choose something where they got all the details and everything and then they can just kind of get an ideal price but in order for that to happen we have to literally um you know back to our lawyer just really just work certain things out where we meet with every builder and things are laid out um and that way people don't have to have surprises and people have pre-estimates that they can also use and share with uh, other groups uh, that they may be looking to do their building uh, so uh, those are things that uh, goal, um, which we're working on many different things is to get uh, completed within the next two to three months. So one of the things I want to share this, one of the things that's important, um, if you've never been to Africa, um, you're driving down the street and you wonder why all these buildings, they look like they've been started and, and they're not finished. Um, that's kind of what that he's talking about, um, signing a, you know, a, a deal maybe with one or two construction companies so that they don't overcharge. What happens when you are abroad sometimes is that you'll start a construction project and you're giving the builder a certain amount of money and you're thinking that the builder is going to be building you your home and they build the home, they build the, the, cause it's easy to build a shell, you know, you can build the foundation. But once it gets to the roof and it gets to the walls and it gets to the doors, you know, a lot of times, you know, it doesn't happen. And people wonder why these houses in, in these places, like not finished. Well, because somebody's either run out of money or somebody's run off with the money or somebody's overpriced something. So it's important that we all know that if you work as a community, instead of by yourself trying to do this, then you're holding everybody accountable, you know? And I think that's what, th that's what they're trying to do is they're trying to vet the contractors so that they're able to provide a, a value to, to the construction um, so that you're not 
stressing out about, well, I gave you 10,000 two weeks ago. Why are you still asking me for money? <laughs> you know, so that, that sort of thing. Um, okay, one of the things that we talked about um, before was the distance um, from Accra to, can you, can you tell us again what is close by um, this area? Uh, yes, uh, what's close by that area? The distance is uh, about an hour and a half from Cape Coast and an hour and a half from Accra. So you're right in between two of the more popular uh, uh, cities uh, in Ghana. And then the uh, next major thing you're close by is you're about two miles away from Winneba, which is that middle city. And uh, you're also two miles away from um, uh, the Winneba University. Uh, um, but beyond that, um, and uh, the next set of anything major, I do, there is a hospital uh, also in Winneba, uh, is as far as the next major areas, going towards Accra, you're gonna have Kaswa, and uh, also you're gonna have the Westlake Mall. So that's about a good, about a good I'd have to actually calculate about a good 20 to 30 minutes um, as far as Kaswa and um, the mall area. And maybe off a little bit, um, um, but uh, let me know that um, what you're looking at is things that's going to be about out 30 minutes from now. But if you're looking at uh, things that uh, we need, because uh, that's a whole separate city area itself right there. You're at the middle part of the development where most of what's in the middle of that area where we are is undeveloped. So that literally just give you a chance to build, I mean, build everything that we actually need from the ground up. Mm -hmm. Even if uh, the, the town or people that are coming together with us that are investing or getting separate project to build a resort to build different things and we all put our money together and want to build a hospital. Those are all of the real, real, realistic things that we can actually do when we think like that. So again, there's no limitations, but everything is just based on what we're thinking about we're going to do and keep on building. So I'm looking at, you know, um, everyone start building up about three to five years. We have a decent level of building. And then within the next five to 20 years, you have a metropolis that you have built based on us really being about it and having a focus group of people. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so um, um, somebody asked about how do we get added to the WhatsApp group? This is Kim Warren. Uh, we don't have a public WhatsApp group, but uh, once uh, everyone fill out their paperwork and, um, and that's why we have the public Facebook group because uh, you know, you just, uh, you just update everyone. Uh, the WhatsApp group we have is so the members only to discuss and keep up with information. And the same, some of the same information I'm giving you and talking with you about is the same information I would pose, except you're just dealing with one group of people that you know that are members. And then um, we're broken up into uh, 10 different committees. Uh, so once someone finish um, signing the overview, that everything is clear and then sign the bylaws, which represent 100% of the information that we went through on the website, even though we skipped through then uh, they clear for that name, so submit all of your documents and your deposit. Then we'll just start adding you into private groups and then we just kind of connect and keep building from there on. Okay. Um, one, one thing I wanted you to, to um, just touch on and just maybe give us the names of the committees because the committees are set, um, and, and, and I, think, I think you mentioned this earlier, that um, they have these committees that are working towards um, what the community is going to look like. So tell us what the names and uh, some of the committees that are set up to do what. Uh, perfect. Uh, so we have the uh, Business and Professional Affairs Committee, and uh, that's just to you know, organize us as a, uh, to handle all of the business-related things and uh, really push a level of uh, us being professional and, uh, and having organized information technology and things like that. Uh, safety, security, and surveillance, uh, their goal is to build uh, security detail uh, for us to operate. Education, culture, and social affairs. Uh, that's to build our own curriculum as far as all age education, as far as uh, uh, general education and technology and business. Uh, and, and social connection, including public affairs and things like that. Uh, that way you're educating a generation of uh, children that uh, you know, is with purpose of what we're building, which is um, a, a straight up, um, you know, a, the nation building uh, effort um, and also this incorporating um, corporate, corporate, uh, corporate economics and also a way where we can educate our own children with all of the, the skills because all of these different um, committees there, 
you know, we have very high skilled people that have great backgrounds and that's what you're putting together. Uh, sustainable energy and utilities, uh, that's how we're gonna get a solar uh, system, a borehole or catch water system and our internet system. From this group, uh, their goal is to organize uh, those things to where we have the best energy and efficient methods to um, take care of uh, those uh, utilities. Medical and wellness, uh, once you, for the people who have medical background, they have volunteered and from us uh, organizing what the plant that are medicinal and what we can plant as far as healthy wise, it goes to that level of wellness to where you're planting the things that's gonna keep you healthy and strong and you're using more traditional natural medicine than anything else. And um, if you get it to where you can really build a program beyond this, then you can literally uh, build, you know, build a hospital based on all other elements that would have to come together. But this is just a foundation, just like the school. If you ever want to build like a you know, university type setup, you know, there's enough land there, but you know, again, you know, everything we build here is a foundation of what we can even expand more. Uh, planning and development, that's how we're organizing all of the development uh, phase and how we're going to come up with financial ways to plan and work on development, um, you know, uh, budget and things like that. Uh, maintenance and landscaping, a uh, general group that's focused on making sure we have a detail to when people come to our property uh, or community, they actually see a community, they don't see things that's out of order and you know, it's, it's, everything is manicured, cured, organized, uh, maintained. And you know, you know, and look good. And it's one of the things where you have to always incorporate in the science of life is things are going to be built, and you have to maintain them. And the better you have a maintenance program, the better you can make your property look good and also increase the value, and also make it attractive to where investors want to look at it and say, "Hey, I would love to buy some land and use you know, some of the resources of what you guys have, you know, to build other things we're building." So you're building that kind of foundation. To where you're trying to set a model and an example um, and you know you just do it one of your ways just like anyone else and create a, another model of how you can actually create something where you can repatriate and be a community okay. waste management recycling uh, from composting uh, programs to uh, us uh, recycling certain things that need to be recycled to even find out how we can use manufacturing to use whatever we're wasting to manufacture into other things uh, so Compost is a system that we have set up and uh, that group is gonna organize the fine details of the biodiesel compost system and we'll all work it out and where that, that can be set at, you know, around your home that way you'd have clo close access to, to it. Uh, and it's the same thing with, um, um, with uh, the actual management of it. You're creating a management system to where the trash is being picked up and being disposed of and organized around the community. Agriculture and livestock. So as far as the, the five to eight acres, we can just you know, build a level of where we can create something where you can use 75% of the things that you're, you know, as far as agriculture and livestock you can use. And in one way or the other, you know, you can use others for trading and uh, negotiating, import, export, and the different things. You're just creating a system to where you can uh, take care of the basic needs in the community and also even encourage everyone to plant a mango tree, um, orange tree or whatever different kind of trees in the backyard is perfect for shade and also make the property look real good. The same thing in the community center around the, the different center. Um, you know, you come into a community where when you look up, you're actually seeing food on the trees. It's not just a general tree. Um, I, I grew up in Jamaica and that's what the mindset was when I thought about connecting back to country like Ghana. Um, you know, and, and especially after I've been to the Gambia where everywhere I went, there's mango trees and all different kinds of trees everywhere. And then this also other tropical country. So uh, you create these kind of programs to where, you know, you're building, you know, a very, very sustainable community and you add in all different aspects of, of being independent and uh, being self-developed. Bylaws and the homeowners affair, that's that long document we had. We'll show you some level of structure of how we, you know, because once you build it and expand and um, you know, you know, community committees and different things are going to be a lot bigger, and then you have more space to really just um, even expand on how you operate. But at least the structure and order of how these groups are already operating is already going, and then people can plug themselves into it. Um, and so, as you move along, what we're doing in this community, and other people can tell you from the beginning, none of these things existed and was organized. And uh, this is the latest thing that we have created. And as you see in the 
a video I showed the last video that we did as far as a conference call video was uh, talking about uh, committee organ organizing, organizing, organization and organizing. Uh, so that's uh, those committees and that's um, one of the, I would say the, the major strategies uh, that's been developed and it's, things are running smooth and very efficient that I would even call it accelerated. Okay. Can I, so, can I say something? Yes. Uh, sure, go ahead. This, this is like uh, what we're used to, community associations. Mm -hmm. Like we have association in the community. In the association, you have various community. Uh, it's broke down to sub, sub community, sub committees. And so this is like what he's talking about. You have to, you have to first fill out the paperwork. And after fill out the paperwork and you go through all the things that um, you are supposed to, and then you become you can you can become part of one of these communities. Same way you would do with your your home association. If you have a home association with the block club, that would be a subcommittee. You might have um, activities committee might be a part of it. So this is what what's going on. I appreciate you explaining that. And that's what it is, but uh, the thing of it is, is not everyone uh, is familiar with those terms. Um, I learned about those situations when I came to the South here in Atlanta, Georgia, but living in New York City and, and things, it wasn't something that, um, because it then depends on where you live and what you're exposed to, but um, that's exactly what we're doing. It's more of a corporate system of what uh, people that are serious, especially the, the home buyers and people who have been through that experience and um, you know, and, and, and that's what you're doing. Even in some cases when you're renting an apartment or a condo or anything, it, it comes into the similar terms. So it's back to what I was saying about the legality of things. It's a combination of you showing ownership of everything that you're doing and all the paperwork in reference to a group. And you're tying it to a unique experience from that, that's relative to what people are you know, used to. And also, honestly, it's what people are comfortable with um, you know, to wear because you know you still have to explain to everyone how you're going to figure out all these things, and you know I know it's difficult to answer 20 years of questions, but uh, it's right here, and we'll always be able to go back to this saying that we built a foundation of bylaws and an overview of who's need to be in part of community, and that would clarify the details. And when people are filling things out and going through that process, um, not everybody is going to feel you know feel like they want to move forward. And so it does become that kind of process where you end up having the people who see everything and they can kind of flow with it and connect. And, um, and then everybody else, I always say, honestly, just keep watching. And uh, we're one of those people that always want to keep on giving you more and more information. All right. So I, I have another question about um, if the, the person that owns the land and has built on the land. Uh, first of all, we did talk about um, how much time you have to build on the land, right? Uh, that's how uh, three to five years, uh, three um, uh, years you want to get to where uh, you can live in the house. Um, so that, that three to five year period is key for us to pace ourselves. That with five years, we can say, hey, uh, almost everything will develop. Okay. And then if somebody buys the land and they pass away, um, that land then goes to their estate and then do they get transferred or do... Does it go back to, to your organization? Uh, two things happen. Um, the land, uh, a person have it set up uh, with property management that if something happened to them, uh, they get this, uh, the land goes to this person, then that's who the, that, that land gets as long as they qualified to flow with the rest of us as far as uh, what's required. Uh, then the next thing is uh, uh, if no one is there to claim it, uh, what we're doing is we're keeping everything in the community, just like the business center and everything is owned in the community. Anything that any wealth or anything that's left in the community just goes back to uh, empowering the community and even financial cash flow uh, of things can always go to our main account, which will have a, a corporate system to manage that account. And you know, the goal is for us to always keep as much cash flow in the in, a, in, in our own uh, uh, bank system and also our own credit unit as we build one in the future to be able to just use that cash to empower the project that we're doing, which is also an ultimate outreach for those in the diaspora who may need help to come. So some of that money can use for tickets, we can use for different programs, uh, but it's all up to the person who
commit, but it's an automatic situation unless someone tells us they're going to do something else with the property. And then naturally your children as a direct heir to uh, any property or anything that's on the property. So, so it's a good idea to make sure that when you have a will that you put your, your if you're going to buy land in Ghana, to put your land in your will to make sure that your children know about it. Right. And exactly then, so. and then you have to vet the children. Uh, yes, it'd be a situation where they just fill out the same application and, and, and okay. join in. If they were a child and they're part of the, the, the community, they, they just grow up in the community. And mm -hmm. I'm sure we can just work out whatever. And then, you know, by then you have um, a modern day update profile as them as an adult. Um, so you can just have all that stuff organized and have a very organized property management crew that when you first you know, come to the business center, they're there or, or community center, they're there and they have access to all the documents. And we just create a modern day system mm -hmm. of, um, you know, just like any other real estate um, space, but um, it's just working it as a private operation. Okay. So um, one other question about the, the beach. Is, the, is phase two closer or further away from the beach? Uh, it's approximately the same. Uh, phase uh, two and one is all connected. Uh, okay. The beach is two miles away. Okay. All right. And, and the beach is not a crowded beach. It's because that no, it's not, not a crowded, crowded beach. And it's, uh, it's uh, one of those things where you know, we, have, we have nice videos on our video log and you, just, you see the beach. Uh, we pull up our big red bus and you, know, you see a group of folks out there that's uh, socializing, but um, it was pretty much open. When I went yeah. down uh, further to the water uh, where you normally see uh, people just uh, laid out in the sun and have their shade, um, it was just bare. And the, the, the best thing about it, honestly, is, is you know, the whole time in my mind is I'm looking le to the left or right, looking at, to see if everything is on the, the ground and, or in the sand or if we have, and it was like literally clean beach. And that's why I say that it's like a virgin area where right. uh, you do have tourists come to that area for the beach, but it's not like it's a bunch of resorts set up to where you can just spend a weekend and things like that. And um, uh, the chief in his jurisdiction, that's one of their uh, selling point is to let you know that they have a clean beach and their goal is to keep the beach clean. And, mm -hmm. and then, you know, we can, we can also have volunteers to join the cleaning party of the community. It's one of those important things I remember just being in Jamaica, where, you know, you just get up the next morning after the big party and everybody clean up and it's clean up on a regular basis and just maintain your, you know, your community. So it looks good. Okay. So um, uh, it's almost um, nine o'clock. Um, I, I just have one more question about infrastructure roads can you just go over that again yeah, as far as our development um, um, project is to put together a developing uh, fund but also come up with different ideas of uh, self-investing our money to create the full development so um, we can probably lay out some gravel as best as I can as we can but the goal is to use some of that money to literally build the roads and build certain things like you know what we consider like more of a sidewalk and build certain ways to where the community doesn't flood. So those are things that we look into design and the business plan and looking to just organize more development plan. But uh, honestly looking for the guys to in the next two months to literally clear the land and mark things out. That way we can start planning accordingly. Uh, so unfortunately, a lot of these things that we're doing consecutively, uh, but uh, so much that we want to just get done that um, we're trying to deal with the adjustment Mm -hmm. That was our goal is to use the summer to do all of the things uh, to, to, you know, to honestly even make it look a lot clearer and more things in place. Okay. Um, so just go over phase one and phase two again, please, so that everybody understands. Uh, yes, phase, uh, phase one is 60 plots, uh, 15 acres, and 50 of those plots, which are all taken, are just all of the initial foundation, but along with those 50 plots uh, of 80 by 100, uh, you have a park, community center, business center, a security post, and all of us have access to all of these uh, places and things we set up based on the fact that we're all investors and people working on the, you know, on the land and different people will function to, you know, and volunteer to do different things in these places. And also this, these are two, these, it's all set up as a business also. Uh, uh, phase two is 50 acres of land, uh, and that's the deal I got going right now with the chief, and I have a deposit ready for him, um, but at the same time, too, I don't, we're trying to avoid having two simultaneous, 
two continuous deal going. So the goal is to close out in this other deal, the end of August, and then get the chief for deposit for the 50 acres. And literally just laid out to where we can literally start um, getting the land survey, um, land search, and those things uh, in paper and set up so we can plan out the site map. And a site map we have uh, from you know, our own medical center, our own, our, our own school, our education and buildings. Mm -hmm. Let's see what else I have. Let me actually go to the chart. Well, so, chart. so I, I yeah. just wanted to clarify, phase one started when? September last year? Uh, yes, yeah, September last year. Okay. And then, and then you're almost finished. And then phase one is completely sold out. And so you're almost finished with phase one in August. And then after August, like September, phase two will begin. Uh, exactly. Um, and uh, you know, what you're trying to do is you're, you're planning ahead and you're organizing as much stuff as possible. But as far as uh, you know, the phase two, you're looking to even add an additional park, a community center, business center. And this is all based on the expansion of people there. Um, and you know, also looking to just use that space for commercial buildings, especially if somebody says he wants a storage room or they want maybe to you know, build a small manufacturer and things like that. And then ultimately outside this land, since we don't want to restrict ourselves, but uh, we don't want to do what everyone else seemed to have done, get hundreds of acres of land and still don't know where to start uh, mm -hmm. after like 15, 16 years, um, unfortunate. So even the small 15 acres literally inspire everything for the 50 acres, but, and we can keep on going, but the main thing, uh, with these two phases is to get other aspect of investment in the area so it looked like a full-fledged actual town and beyond us a community and expand off on, onto the other things that you're looking to do. So the main thing on this one is additional 100 to 120 plots of land. Uh, and that's... Uh, okay, and and one more thing, one more thing. Uh, I, just wanted, I just wanted you to just say really quickly the the process you go online you go ahead you go online you sign up uh, the main thing um, is uh, to have individuals uh, review the uh, details so what the, the the main thing is honestly uh, to all the files that I went through is to just go through them because I just went through everything in an overall sense I was trying to avoid doing you know, one of those things where you have something up in front of you and you're reading it uh, I was just giving an overview of everything so uh, for the clear eyes, individuals just need to look through it again. But what I can also do is uh, the same email that you received that say phase two getting started, that could be shared to individuals and they can organize the things that they need to organize. Uh, but at the same time too, they can take time to process and look through all the details um, and for clarity that way, they can write down additional questions and even have a one-on-one or communicate with me that way. Things are clear before they commit. Uh, so that's uh, really the, the starting point of it, um, looking over the information again and getting your documents together and okay. then uh, being prepared to sign off an overview in the bylaws and submit a deposit and that will all get you ready to get started and then we'll also give you a um, receipt uh, for... Uh, well, it's nine o'clock. We've been on the phone for two hours. Uh, yes, and but if anyone has uh, any question in general, I'm, I'm not in a rush. Uh, I can still stay around for a few more minutes. Uh, if they have a direct question beyond what was typed, I know sometimes someone may not have heard about uh, typing a message. Uh, so if you want to do that, um, I'm open to any general questions. Okay. The laws? Well, I'd like to, first of all, thank you, Bomani, for coming on and, and going through in such detail uh, the project. Um, we, we know that uh, you work very, very hard at this. I'd also like to thank uh, Ada for um, her, all her hard work um, in vetting. We vetted um, several different uh, land type companies and um, this is the best that we found. Uh, we, it's more, more thorough than I imagined. So uh, we want to thank you all and all of you that have come on tonight. You have access to the Black Star Reparation and Community Project. You can go online and check it out. 
we um, we don't want anyone to do anything they don't want to do, but uh, this is available and it is also awesome. Uh, so I just want to thank you once again, Bumani, for uh, for coming on and, and doing such a great job. And <clears throat> this is your second meeting. We had another meeting, a two hour meeting before this meeting. So you, thank you for spending four hours out here time. <laughs> you know, that was, uh, that's been awesome. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah, I'm not used to talking so long. So sometimes you're in a voice and like that. So, <laughs> and um, Adah spent four hours with us too. Yeah, appreciate you, Adah, um, to making things a lot simpler as far as um, this also, since you have the experience traveling internationally, you're from um, uh, Cameroon and things like that, just uh, explain things in simpler terms uh, as we went through the presentation. So, uh, and, and, and that's uh, all we're also telling everyone that all of us are trying to just make sure things are clear and right. trying to educate and look out for all of us. And I feel like if we can't, you know, carry that kind of order, we're, you know, we're not going to build anything, but uh, that's what we're actually uniquely coming together as a people more because we're all having these experience on wondering like why we can't come together and, you know, make it all work out. So, and that's why we just had to realize that we just have to add in all these layers of details because most of us are coming from a standpoint where we never left um, America, never, you know, and some people never left a certain state and things like that. And, you know, people have different experience, but uh, literally trying to get to where it's, it, it, I don't know if it's going to be simple, but at least it's detailed enough to where things can be answered and us being available. So um, it's, you know, it's one of those things where I'm always available to do this. Uh, and, and we can also do another follow-up, even if it's another month or two from now and things like that. And the other thing that we'll I'll have is the general conference call that we usually do, uh, which is just a, 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 it's not a video conference like this, it's just a, a, one of those free conference calls um, to where I'm not um, doing video, I'm just um, using it to this um, as a nice conference call preparation. But even so, you know, when we do some more of these, um, uh, we can just, you know, everybody would be a lot clearer on certain things and a lot of things that we, you know, remember asking questions on, we can say, hey, now this was accomplished now, what are the next steps? And as we keep on going like that, honestly, we'll get it done because I'm literally looking at September of last year and even beyond that, looking at dealing with Garvey Town, November 2018, and spend all that time months going there twice in Ghana, uh, doing tours and bringing buses there, and you know trying to get things done, and then things just weren't moving as we needed to move. Uh, so it also showed me that as long as individuals are willing to participate, we can get things done because everything is being done by actually a group and things like that, and not. And you know, as a matter of fact, it's uh, honestly it's what we'll just call all hands because. You have to, you know, all of us live in different places and you just have to use the modern day system to just get things accomplished. You know? Well, so I appreciate all your efforts. And uh, you, I, I, what I look at, like about you is your transparency and the due diligence to do the right thing with attorneys and get the pa right paperwork with the land commission and the surveys. Those things are essential. This is the first time that I've heard, even while dealing with all this, uh, about uh, you know all of these things that needed to be done, and there's even more that needs to be done. But we thank uh, you for taking the time to take the leadership to do this. Somebody had to do it, and we thank uh, Yah that He placed you in our path. Um, so, uh, and Ada is definitely. She is an organizer extraordinaire, <laughs> and uh, we can't wait for this community to uh, to be a part of it. Uh, phase two, or even phase one, if somebody backs out. So, uh, are there any more questions? I, we'll uh, we'll stick around for a minute. Uh, I see there's 26 people still on. If you have some questions, we'll stick around with you. You know, I want to add one thing uh, to the situation. It's kind of in the last few months, people have been, people mind has been more open than ever because they're like, what is going on in America? And uh, even more so what's going on in the world. Uh, so it's like, uh, going back to, I've said, um, you know, sometimes a few times in different conversation that, you know, think about what if we'd have uh, invested like 5% of our energy in Amer from America uh, into Africa over the last 50, 60 years, ever since we started hearing about African countries being independent 
and us as a people fighting for our own um, you know, independence in this country, you know, it will be in a, on a whole different level as far as uh, Africa. So it's uh, you know, not too late. So uh, it's one of those things where uh, even for those who may join the energy five years later, it's like, it's a good time to just get your mind organized and work out that second plan. Some people may, you know, want to even, you know, build, extend out to their career and get things organized to where they have a unique business that they have built here and then now they want to take it to Ghana. Uh, so wherever you are, you know, that, um, since some of us may not be able to leave right away, let's uh, plan as best as possible ahead of time and organize our thoughts and just, um, you know, when we all get more into a private group, uh, we just keep in touch with those of us that's in this world because it's not like it's a big population of us. If you go out and talk to nine out of 10 people, they're probably all want to call the crazy people on us and say that we're acting insane and we're in lost our mind. Uh, you know, Cause people say, we'll probably feel like, well, you need to be, this is what's going on right now. You need to be focused on this. Why are you thinking about Africa all the way far over there? And, uh, and you know, so you, so those of us that's uh, have that open mind, it's, it's up to the rest of us to also share with those. So, um, you know, we have to also just create more content. So these are some of the contents that uh, is created and try to be available and, even my colorful background <laughs> of uh, uh, just to you know, draw the energy of our colors, our red, uh, black, green, and gold. And to just uh, let people know that it's, you know, it's, it's our time. But I uh, don't want to hold anyone else. Uh, so um, I was, I'm on standby for any direct questions. And then when the last yeah. question's finished, I can close. Yeah, I still have a, I have a question. Bye, everybody. Thank Bye, you. Bye, Thank you, everybody. All right, uh, we'll see you later, and I'll still be around. Okay. Family. Right, come on. Um, Is he still around? Yeah. Oh yes, I'm still around. How about your question? Yes. My question. My question is, if you wanna in that community, if uh, you have enough capital, or whatever, and you wanna put a uh, maybe a, a grocery store, people are gonna need food. Uh, they may not wanna drive, um, uh, you know, the distance to the nearest uh, uh, city, which is gonna be a distance, I guess. Uh, if you want to put a gas station or maybe uh, a grocery store uh, across the street or near where people can get food and gas, um, would you have to uh, go into business with a federal, federal uh, Ghanaian? Or can you, like me and one of, um, like, say, for Pastor, um, Pastor Law or someone else, could we go into business together and build a product? Now, if we build it and we have to leave, we would have to have a management company to manage it while we leave the country because of the visa. The goal we have is um, uh, the business started Africa for Africans tourism investment is to manage the, those operations for our investments. So since we create a black star pan African community, we have a management structure there um, as we have, you know, business and professionalism, which is more the management sector of our committee. Uh, our goal is to make sure that uh, we represent you on the management side to manage your property, make sure that, uh, uh, everything is being taken care of. Uh, that way we can just have a level where people are not stressed that they got to every once in a while go get plane tickets. So that's one of the things that is this real crazy. Yeah, people tell you that oh, I've been to Ghana five times, six times. I was like, for real? And I was like, you know, but um, I believe you just got to come up with a proper technique. So even uh, once we leave our community, uh, that's not our land. So the chief, since that's his jurisdiction, uh, we've been communicating. So he's been his goal has always been wanting to expand its town from a little small town that has a beautiful beach into a metropolis. Uh, so he's, so we're, we're one of the investors that uh, he reached out to as far as a group of people that actually wanted to move. And uh, so he's given us full access to also reach out to other people if they want maybe additional five acres over here to build a manufacturer, five acres over here to build a, a shopping strip and so on. And you do have uh, food in front of the community itself. Uh, but all of the major thing, things and the main thing that we want is we want to be able to build it. So uh, once we start building certain things in phase one or phase two, the goal is to, you know, because you're, you're building something where you want to have more and more people come in. And that's kind of like when you're developing one of these cities here. And, you know, especially one of those suburban cities where people are like, man, there's nothing out here. The next thing you'll come around five, six, seven years later, movie theater is there, grocery store is there. Um, a maintenance facility and so we are you now we have the chance uh, along with other Ghanaians and other people of African na national and other folks in the diaspora to work together to literally invest in all those things so a lot of things may have to be us working together joining with other people to build different parts of our community it's kind of like what we 
should be doing in America and what we used to do in America because people who've been around from the 50s and 60s always tell me that the things you talk about we had and I, I was like wow that means we're moving backwards right and I said yes uh, so I was telling that you know it's the level of us being able to do what we want to do on the highest level since we don't have a bureaucratic system dealing with us we don't have people that are sending their agents to make sure things don't happen. You know, this is our land, our community, our people in charge and our people running things from the chief, which is one of our best business partners, down to the legal people that's there, to the people that are our elders and the people who've been there for generations. Uh, so it's one of those things where you have to, you know, even with the orphanage that we're adopting, uh, all those things flow to where you can actually be in a world where anything that you need to get done you know, it's kind of like you being the buyer and the seller. You know, you basically made the deal. Right. Well, I guess what I'm trying to try, I don't want to sound like, uh, I'm just trying to get a clear understanding. If, if there's a situation where we can build a, a grocery store or a gas station and uh, we, we're there for 40 years or 99 years or whatever, um, basically what you're saying, even though we build this and we put the, the money into it, it's not really ours. It's it's really the chiefs. After we put the money, I'm just I'm just trying to be clear on this. After we put the money in and and, and have it built, get the business going. The business is making money, and for whatever reason, I'm just I'm just asking a question. Uh, it's not really. It, it doesn't really belong to us. It really belongs to the chief. Is that correct or not? No, it doesn't really belong to the chief. That's why you're signing a lease that this is your this is your property, your land, your everything for 99 year year. If we do anything outside of our, our communities, uh, it's based on that um, the lease and those agreements that we sign and everything. But as far as you talking about a gas station, someone would have to get additional plots to pay for that. So, say example, we as a community, Black South Pan African community, put our money together, and you know our best connection is the people who own the land. And, and they're the, the traditional council and everything, the same people that uh, showed in the video and also in the, um, and, and also in the, uh, the pictures. Uh, so we're sitting down with them and our legal team, which one, right now we have one lawyer. We have, we'll build a few more lawyers on top of that situation. And we're signing an agreement to where, you know, over in our community, maybe you have two people that say they literally want to take the lead on it and paying for it. And that's their business right there. And also that's all, you know, anything that we do literally, we want it to really be more community putting their money together to fund it, even if uh, just like the business sent in certain things, but you can have your own private business and it's on that year, 99 year lease where it's your own. And even if we don't go, cause some things like, like if you want to do a construction company, um, it could just be your personal construction company uh, because we don't always have to do everything as the business name. It'd be ideal once we get to that level that way, everything will always be in a community where you, your family, and everyone is uh, involved in. Uh, so it can go both uh, ways as far as ownership. Uh, but um, no one is going to come and take anything because everything that we build in is for the clarity of it's supporting everything that's already there. Um, something that, like I said, we should be doing here, but uh, we don't have that kind of freedom to do those things here. And let me know if it's okay that uh, you can reiterate your question. Uh, go ahead. Uh, Greg, this is Yolanda. Maybe I can clarify. The lease is separate from the business. Okay. So the lease, the lease that you have, that he has with the chief, that's all it is. It's the land of lease. So whatever business you do in the community is your business. Exactly. That's like so the at building, your house is your house. Okay. 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 Thank you, Yolanda. All right, so, so example, um, we're offering commercial plots. So, um, uh, if you decide you want to build a, um, if you want to build a, you know, that's a, that's a general uh, store that uh, deals with uh, research and development supplies, just to give a name to it. Uh, that's your business in the business district of what we'll create in phase two, uh, which we're going to just try to find the best way to make it look good as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, you're part of the, you know, you're still a part of the community, but that's your ownership, just like your home. And what we do as far as those of us that own business like myself, that's either operating at a business center or I have a separate building, is we'll find the best way of how we can all put back money into the community to keep it developing. And to where even um, a lot of times we can just we will operate as a, a community entity uh, and something like a gas station or something like that, that could be a business of ours 
we're bringing additional income into the community. And also that's how, because uh, the goal is to make sure everybody gets paid. Um, it's something un, not, uh, people may not you know, think about, but it's like, you're creating a conglomerate, a community is a conglomerate of business people. And that's what we also encourage in that people, some people are coming to retire and, and do certain things, but you want to cr create people more in the mindset of and you're, you're investing that way, your investment is cycling and it's taking care of you. And you're not uh, having to go to figure out where you're going to work at and things like that. And uh, let me know if that's a little more clearer. Yeah, that's a little more clearer. I just, uh, I, I, you know, our people like to eat and, and we, we like to drive. I just, I just think personally, if I could afford, or my wife and I can afford a gas station opposed to a building material company, you know, I just, you know, I just wanted to know, that's all. If it was, if we can get the extra five acres to develop a gas station, to be owners of a gas, a business, you know, or person again, those two things are needed. Those are valuable things to have, you know, if we're going to have that community, it look like it's going to be a nice community. They're always going to have food and always going to need gas. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, the goal is to build, like I mentioned, a town. You're building a town from, from not, from a town not being there is this title of town. Um, and that's, uh, as a group of investors, uh, that's exactly what we want. So individuals like yourself say, um, you want, um, you, you check the property out and you see, you know, you're there and, you know, you're with one of our guys and you say, and then this part of the community, not community, this part of the actual town at the very beginning. Um, and if it's in the chief jurisdiction, we can work that deal out for you. If it's another chief in charge of it, that's when we have to get lawyer and consultant. They have mm -hmm. to work a deal where, um, you know, you get the land survey, land search, everything is always back to that foundation. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and then what it is, it's actually in your physical name. Like you're the one that's filling that lease for it. Mm -hmm. And then it's a more commercial property now. So, you know, and all we're doing uh, myself um, in the, the business I do as far as investing is being your, the organizer that's administratively managing things to make sure that I represent you and I represent the people that uh, we're dealing with to make the deal go through. And it's on my philosophy of you being the buyer and the seller. You want to make sure that everything works out for everybody. Okay. All right. So, yeah, so you know, we can definitely give you more information on that uh, um, and, you know, talk about that separate deal. So, but I want to let everyone know it's the same thing. If you want to build a supermarket or you want to build a strip mall and things like that, um, those would be separate deal. Like, and especially for the people who want to build a resort or build certain things on the beach, like the beachfront property, I know the, the, the cost of that, that's 5,500. Um, plus what we do is to charge uh, 5,000 oh, yeah. administrative costs. So you're looking at six thousand per plot. Uh, so those who, you know, so even an investment group of people that were looking to just get that done would sit down with them with, you know, if not this lawyer, another lawyer, and we'll work the deal out. And uh, you have me as a person that has built a reputation as a serious person in this business to represent you and put all my credibility credentials on the line and all of my best people on the line and kind of offer everyone all of our support. Uh, it's a little bit different because a lot of accountability, but it took a long time to also get here from when I first was just exposed to uh, people trying to build this community when I was in my mid, uh, you know, uh, mid and late 20s to now uh, early 40s and uh, been able to just build the experience to where I can speak with confidence and explain how we can actually pull this off because what, a lot of times you're trying to do things and everything is like, it's kind of like, the, the whole political bureaucracy is things that is, I can't deal with. And I told anyone dealing with that, we're not dealing with this stuff. We need to clear, create a clean cut process that works and can get things done. And, right. um, and that's what I'm all about. And anyone that gets in our way, um, well, we don't have anyone in our way because all of us who agree to do what we're doing, we're the ones running the, uh, and organizing things to make sure that literally no one else is in our way. That's what I said, we have that good relationship with the chief, the consultant and the lawyer. And also we're going to build a relationship with the community to where we're doing things to, to you know, to, you, your goal is to, uh, this is like village uh, world. Uh, so your goal is to build up the standards of energy and not just to come there and build fancy places. And then, you know, then local folks are looking like what happened that the people forget about them. And I've seen that in Ghana and breaks my heart. And I've always was one of those people in the early stages of doing things that I would never come here and, and, 
and encourage that type of uh, mindset. And that's why we have so much rules and regulations and things like that. So the money exchange, would it be the same? Uh, would we use American dollars or would it be CDs that we use? As far as uh, paying for the land and things like that, everything is all uh, American dollars. Uh, once you get to the country and you're doing any kind of business, uh, it becomes CDs. But everything we do here is American and, um, and uh, we transfer it uh, using American currency. Okay. Uh, perfect, Seth. So if, if that's your question, let me mute you. And any other, anyone else uh, that have a question, uh, I'm willing to stay on for uh, uh, stay on for, for a little bit more time. That's uh, fine. Uh, you just have to unmute yourself and ask your question. What is the deadline? Um, when are you expecting initial payment, and how much? Um, uh, are you expecting for the initial payment? I see the 2,500 plus the 500 and um, for the larger lots, um, 3,000, which includes the 500. Um, what, are, what are you expecting for the first down payment or the clearing of the paperwork um, uh, yes, I can in, tell you, uh, in, the, in the time period of that? I'm sorry. Yeah, I can tell you uh, right away. Uh, we started everything um, uh, last month in May as far as uh, saying phase two is ready. So that's the email that uh, you'd get. Uh, and only thing that we need to get started as far, as, far as, uh, this, as confirming that someone is serious and they're down with everything is a $500 deposit. But before that, um, the paperwork that I mentioned that um, is in getting started, uh, that's uh, required. And then after that, the sign off that you're clear on the bylaws and the overview, which is 100% of everything that we're about. And then, um, you know, want everyone to at least be, you know, watch some of the videos and watch some of the details so they're clear about what's going on. And once all of that is done, then we'll lock you in our private group and have you on the members list. And then we just build that relationship where you start getting to know other people in the group. Uh, so uh, there's no deadline. Um, we'll have a list of from one to 120, 130. And for those who put deposit every time you just, you're adding that list, and then when it comes to the site map, once we finish it in the next few months, uh, then the first person all the way down to get their chance in order to pick whatever plots they want or the plots that they want. And we just keep things like that. And then once we do more and get more things done, it's up to the individuals to pace themselves and we'll work it to where uh, they can they have up to about, um, about uh, six months or more to pay for the land. So it's not a situation where you need to come up with a whole lot of money up front. It's just that you need an initial deposit uh, after you're clear. That way things can uh, get started and get going uh, for you. And you can just yep. connect and you said the it, paper. Go ahead. And you said the initial deposit is what? Uh, $500. Okay. okay. And the balance will be 2500 Thank you. All right, so family, um, uh, next person, uh, if you can just unmute yourself and uh, your question. Hi, Pumani. Um, I want to just compliment you. You have a lot of details, very good presentation. I just have one question. Right. The um, information about the houses, the house, like is there going to be different types? Do you have those details up on the website? Uh, no, those uh, details are for the next energy of things that we're working on. Uh, those are not on the uh, website and those are not organized. Uh, the same as our, our in detail business plan. Um, uh, those things are in work. So we're trying to spend the um, rest of the, this month and uh, next month to organize as much as we can possibly organize as far as the things that we need to put together. And then uh, the folks in Ghana, uh, they're working on different things. Um, that way, every builder that we're dealing with, uh, we have, organized information as far as estimates for uh, the breakdown of everything that we build in. Someone is not just telling you $50,000 for this and everything has to be laid out to where they're showing us examples of certain things. So trying to be fair with everybody to where we create something unique, but at the same time to individuals can get their own builder and also can look, uh, find their own designs of home. And then even with those designs, it could be uh, shared with the builders that we have or maybe another builder and they can just let you know how much it costs. So those are things um, along with a long list of things that our committees are all organizing. And I assume that these are all local builders, gain and builders, right? 
yes, these are local builders. And what you also have is whatever additional deal that we make with maybe I have a group of you know brothers here from the um, uh, that have experience being part of the Army Corps uh, engineers, and uh, they wanted to come there and spend a few months there and um, and kind of help with certain things. And we'll work out a deal where we just take care of certain things for them as we try to build build you know build energy where we start building to where we have space for guests and people that are coming to do special projects. Uh, you know, so once we start doing certain things and we have other aspects of our community where they're recruiting volunteers to do certain things. So the goal is to do an accelerated uh, development uh, from getting volunteers to, you know, we know a lot of people also and some of them are our friends and they have skills, you know, the only thing is that they can't, they're not gonna commit to living in Africa, but they, they were like, I can spend a month there and I can work, you know, do engineering work here. And those are the things I've gotten over the period of time and me and a lot of the different people have kept in touch and um, and you'll see some of them on the um, on that Facebook group since it's a uh, few hundred people. And then when you actually send out the call to action based on what you have going on, people are gonna come. Okay, thank you. So Lonnie, I got a question. Yeah, actually you can also check the chat. It looks like some people have pl placed some um, questions there if you wanna check the uh, chat. But my question is, and someone did ask this question in the chat, is the utilities going to be connected to the public utilities? Have they already worked that part out for phase one as far as the sewer and the utilities, street lights and so forth, streets? Um, are they working that out or do we know that we will be connected to the uh, utilities for the, uh, for the state there or the government? However it's set up, I'm not really sure. Uh, yes, right now the place is still um, in its uh, bushy state and it's raining. So the goal is to get everything cleared by you know, the next two months. And from there, you can kind of analyze certain things. But as far as the electrical poles, if somebody wants direct electricity, uh, they can have that. And also direct sewer water, I mean, direct water and sewer system. Uh, you can, well, the sewer system would have to be, uh, would have to be septic tanks, uh, but you can get uh, city water. But uh, what we're talking about is that uh, we have a sustainable utility group and what uh, we talked about is for them to provide an uh, organized way for us to use, um, you know, use the borehole system or catch water system built in with a pump and filter system attached to individual homes. And in the future, we can build a certain level of reservoir that will provide water. Uh, so those things are available, what you're asking for, uh, but uh, we're looking to do things more sustainable where we can, you know, build an environment where you know you don't have a bunch of electrical wires running all over your property uh, so um, that's one of those things uh, where also where everything is in process because we're literally getting to the part where we are closing out on all of the paperwork that we need and all of the paperwork and legal stuff so those are be a part of the summer works so they'll be able to just explain to us um, We'd have an organized plan on this is the solar system that we're going to use, how much it costs, how it's going to get set up. The same thing with your septic tank and options of water. So those will be a part of how we're going to build to where once somebody's ready, you send them a packet and as the builders, as the system, you know, trying to do things more organized like the corporate system and that people love in this uh, country when they go to a property management company and they pull up and they have everything all organized. So that's how we literally trying to structure and get ourselves, but we realize that everything we have to build up from the ground up uh, and physically create, including with the documentation. Uh, so look forward to having more of those answers and showing people more examples of those things, honestly, in the, in the, in the coming up months, um, in August and uh, September. And then also when we do more uh, conference calls, um, we generally do a conference call once a month, um, you'll be able to see the process of us getting these things done because our goal is to always update you on everything that we worked on for you know the, the month since the last conference call. Thank you. All right, perfect. I'd like I'd like to make a comment too. Um, so so everybody is clear uh, what Bumani and the group did was they bought 15 acres. What many people are trying to do is go buy land individually and or take advantage of the free land. But what they did was they bought the, the raw 
15 acres to develop it for the group. And the 50 acres is the other site that's developed for the group. The other groups that we, we were trying to go through, they were just selling individual packets of land. Whereas this group, Bomani has, uh, with Bomani has uh, a vision of not just having plots of land, but also land available for construction, for business, for com uh, commercial uses, for uh, educational purposes and me medical purposes. So this is an entirely different type of setup. And what we'd be doing is purchasing the land from the group. So our purchase will bring it, make us become part of the group that owns the land or leases it for 99 years. Most people are just going to lease their land, whether it's an 80 by 100 for 99 years, hopefully if they can get it, but they have no, no input into the other parts of the community. And that is one of the big differences I see here. Is that correct? Uh, yes, I appreciate it. Uh, it's a big difference. Uh, uh, even with uh, these people that say that they're community, um, you just have to ask them, what is your definition of community and uh, where's your vision of how we actually going to be a community? So that's what we're looking to lay out. And um, uh, it, it's just simpler for us, uh, you know, because that was our goal is to do tourism investment. Uh, and uh, after we have so much people interested in traveling with us, might as well we just uh, connect with our group because the people are traveling with us are, are based on traveling with looking for conscious minded people that are into their African roots and it's about uh, you know black nation building uh, so those are more sort of mindset of the same people that we're looking to build a community so it makes it to where you know you, you literally have this built relationship with people where you say hey you know might as well we just do this together since we have so much more similarities as a people and sometimes in the different states that we live in, you may find certain people that you can connect with, but it's never on this level. It's like some of the best energy of those of us that actually want to move together, but realize that we put our resources together, uh, we'll be able to protect ourselves, look out for ourselves, and be able to get a better, better value out of uh, being there and also make a bigger impact. So all of those things that us using the, uh, you know, the technique or the strategy of strength in numbers and using legality, um, and uh, this organized fashion, accountability, consistent communication and update and getting it done. Because we've gotten a whole lot done compared to the other groups that I mentioned that's been around for a very, very long time. Because uh, sometimes you wonder uh, what was their game plan. So our secret game plan is us working every aspect of everything and having to say so and everything and getting it done based on what you see in the overview and the bylaws uh, structure. All right, family, so I'm hoping that uh, all of those details and dialogues uh, kind of clear things up. And I remember, I'm just trying to look through the, the chat real quick. I want first to mention about building contract accountable. Uh, that's one thing um, that uh, we're doing, we just representing you in, as far as management, and then we all have the same importance of this community being developed. So since we have the connections and the people on the ground, you know, we'll, we'll make sure they sign legal agreements and we have a lawyer to, to hold them to those agreements. And then we have people that are there, my consultant and people that will be supervisors managing to making sure everybody do their job. And it's one of those things where, you know, you're getting back to micro, you know, you're getting back to the, uh, the system of micromanagement because unfortunately that's what has to be done to get things done when Sometimes you have certain groups of people come together um, and things like that. So all the techniques that we're working on that we'll be able to share with you uh, in an organized email um, um, that's probably called development plan um, operation. Um, you know, you'll be able to look through it and, and then we'll be able to go through it and also give all the answers to all these other questions and things like that. But uh, yes, all contractors and people that I deal with, they all will be held accountable and they all face judgment dealing with people like myself. 
I don't play around uh, when it comes to people doing their job and people uh, being accountable for what needs to be accountable. There's no way we're going to pull this off if we deal with people that um, are going to act a certain way. So that's why everything is so strict. That's why everything is so strict. That's why everything is uh, so strict and it's not just strict with the group, having group members, it's also strict with everybody we do business with. Um, Garvey Town was telling us that they order supply from a, a company and it was it was bootleg or uh, supplies were not uh, as what it was supposed to be. And you know, even things like that, um, you know, you set up a game plan to work those things out. And you know, and one of the people that literally, we're gonna have a department full of lawyers and it's like, that's the only way, lawyers, consultant, business folks, tough guys, people who actually can make sure that we don't have to deal with bureaucracy and people playing games. And that's one of the things that have turned turn people off as far as when they're looking to move and repatriate. Uh, so uh, this system is set up, it's not a perfect system, but it's us who are empowering it. And uh, we all have a lot to lose, those of us that's organizing it. And, uh, and it's a benefit to all of us to make it work. Um, I got another question, it just came on me. I mean, you know, if I went into business with one of one of uh, say one of the one of the people in my congregation, right? And let's say we wanted to run our business, just him and I, could we tag team like for two months? I run the business, and then I have to leave, and then he run it for two months, and then I come back and run it. Because I'm saying what you you're asking that we're gonna have other people if we develop the business, right? We developed the business. There's, you you're saying there's a management company that would take care of the business for us while we're not there. Is that yes, exactly, and that's why we have the business center, um, and it's there for me to recruit all the people that I'm going to use for consultancy, use for property management, business management, uh, and uh, um, child services. Uh, say, example, if you had to leave your children, your family there, and things like that, we just um, you know we're setting up to where we can look out for each other. These are the issues with repatriation. It's like you're gonna go through that real life situation and it's like, you're gonna ask yourself, who can I really trust and depend on uh, for me to go to handle my business and leave my business there, including my family and make sure they're protected. Uh, right. So all of us had to process all those things and that's why we came up with all these answers and the answer ended up being build a self-sufficient organized community that can we can have everything in-house and handle. And even up to the point where uh, you live in a world where you have predators and you have sick people and that's one of the things that's part of who is not allowed in there so we have we're not even playing with surveillance and people eyes out uh to make sure everybody uh, feels safe and feel good and and feel like we can live in the world that we always wanted to live in uh that we i guess we have tried our best to do that uh, here in america and not saying that this is a metropolis of heaven but it's also saying that it's all of the solutions that we all need uh to look out for each other um, and to cover every different ways of things but, uh, so that's why we build in the level of business and technology in it. Right. But the management company will be working for me and my partner, right? My, yeah, exactly. my partners. So, yeah. uh, so is this mandatory that my partner and I have to have a management company? If we know how to manage the company ourselves. No, you don't have to have a management company. I'm saying uh, the company I have, uh, example, his name is, uh, the company I have is called Bomani Technology and Business Services. Right. And what we do is that's the, uh, and also the, even the investment energy we have, we have people that we're training to handle different accounts. So if you come to me and say, Bomani, um, I need to make a move and, you know, and, you know, whatever business you have in a community and you have someone else to work that out, you can do that. Um, but we're there for support um, okay. and whatever okay. agreement that we work out, uh, we work out, but it's also the business that I'm, we're running and other people are running is to create employment opportunities for the students there especially if I have contracts with different um, black owned companies here that need us to provide technical service support or manage certain accounts or do certain clerical or technical or business work for them, we'll be able to do that there. So you're creating a business center where it can handle all aspects of internal issues and problems and things that need to be handled and managed to also external uh, situations. So you'd have to just let us know which, if you need us to help you. Okay. Uh, let us let you know that our support is there. Uh, especially if, it, I mean, you may be there tomorrow and something seriously happened in America. And the simplest thing for you to do is you come to us, you tell us what happened, we'll get you a ride to the airport and get you a, get you on your way. And then we handle whatever you have in the community. And it's kind of like going back to what you wish you had here in America, true community. 
um, you know, I've been raising my child, he's 10 years old now. And um, it's one of those situations where you find yourself in a, in a, in a world where you, you're not trusting nobody, you're not gonna trust anyone really with your children outside the school system, which you're forced to trust. Um, and that becomes one of your babysitters, but you end up having a little, little, little flow of like, I can't leave my son here alone, uh, especially if his mother has to work and do, do certain things with just anyone. And I'm trying to do trips and tours like that. And in this situation, like even if I needed to do certain things, my son can stay here on the property and we'll have all of those signs of those things work out since we have so much of us and so much support and uh, internal support to our system. And I can then go on to South Africa and handle business. And it's to solve all of the stress and frustration of what we have to deal with. Or if you're coming up on retirement and you don't want someone to throw you in a high rise to where you're in the high rise by yourself and nobody even know you're on the 14th floor and you just slipped and hurt yourself. You're in a community that's more interactive where you have people that are making sure people are checked on, people are good. If you want to take a walk down to the beach, if you need to take a ride down to the beach, you need an escort or if you need a ride out into town, you're creating a way uh, all of that is paid for based on all of us putting our resources together. And, and honestly, when you finish everything, everything comes out so much more cheaper uh, and so much more simpler to where if you may have to put money into pay for electricity in a development fund and it may account for five dollars uh, to, to take care of electricity for the month. Uh, it, and I'm not saying that's the situation, but it becomes that situation when you set up, it's kind of like if we own one of these cities and all of us own all of these things that we have to pay for every month, it becomes a situation where you're not charging yourself. Um, and uh, you know, so I don't know if that uh, helps. Um, yeah, that was good. Now the escort part, that's only because we don't know the train, right? The escort is just because we don't know the area. We want, every time we leave the community, we're not gonna need an escort because of uh, robbery or nothing. The escort is just to give us familiar, I mean, to familiar us with the land, I mean, the surroundings, right? So we're just offering community service. It may be somebody that's a little older that don't wanna walk two miles down by the beach. So she may want a, a car ride or maybe a golf cart ride, something a little simpler. And, um, you know, we have people around to work the property, do different shifts and things. So uh, if someone don't want someone to escort them or be around his eyes out, um, that's also fine. And if you know you want to go to the mall by yourself and get into your own vehicle and drive, it's all up to you. But if you just want to use one of the vehicles the community is providing with a driver, that makes life easier, especially if like five, six people looking to go out. So you're trying to create also a way where those things are included in certain type of costs and you're, you know, you're creating funds to where you're paying drivers and different people. The same thing as the, the tour business I have that will be based there. We're using some of the investment of vehicles and things that we have uh, or me and other people going on and kind of working it. So all of us who have different business, we're using it also to help the, our community. Uh, so it's kind of being self-sufficient and at the highest level that I can think of. Okay, and I want to say that we've been, we've been to Africa several times. We've never had any problem. Nobody's never tried to accost us, steal from us. I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but um, this it's not what, what you think. You need to get there and get a feel for the culture. We don't have a, if you have never been, you don't have a feel for the culture. Get there, um, if, you're gonna, if you buy land, part of the land will be the tour where we will um, get a feel of where we're at get a feel of how people live if you're not familiar with that. So um, we, we've always had a wonderful time and the people are very friendly, very warm. So some of the things that you're concerned about is because you haven't been, but you're going with a group and you're going with a group. It's like the community will be a group, will operate as a group. So with that, that just provides some extra uh, you know, you're not gonna need a guard every time you move. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not gonna do that. And Bumani, can you give your uh, the website again? Uh, yes, our family. And what uh, I also got is on the chat at the very top is our website, uh, Africa for the Africans .org. And uh, the link that I have actually have the extension for the Black Star Repatriation and Pan African Community. But the main thing is once you go on africaforafricans.org is you click on the community, let's say Black Star, and it's the only thing that we have that's a community, everything else is tours, and it just opens up to where you um, be able to read those documents that we mentioned uh, earlier, 
that sucks. <laughs> and uh, also, uh, the, the, yes, the community in the area is very safe, and it's um, it's an area where where we have a lot of input in, and we are, um, you know, a lot of people are gonna know about us because we're doing some wonderful work, uh, and people have been talking about us already, uh, saying that you know, because people are looking forward to they see things that's going on and on you know on TV and they and on news and things like that, and you know, some people are worried about. Um, you know, why do some of us deal with some of the things in America? So people get excited when they hear that you move into the community and you're looking to build some level of energy and, and things like that and you're open to connecting. Uh, so it's, it'll be an energy where you'd be safe, but uh, until we build certain things, um, you may not, you know, there's only so far you're gonna be able to walk because uh, it's gonna be still gonna be suburban, but eventually you'll be able to walk around the, the, the entire 65 acre community and then other people were building biz business and building the energy, you know, you'll be able to see a level of uh, residential and commercial uh, energy. Okay, if there's not any more questions, no one else have another question, we're gonna let Bumani go for the day. He's been on uh, five, five, six hours now. So we thank yeah, you very been much. On this, you've been on a few calls, but you know, it's the nature of uh, business and things. Yeah, uh, and, yeah. and we're and really, you're really, we're really excited. So we'll be the first, and Adai says she'll be the second. So <laughs> look for our paperwork. <laughs> look for our paperwork. So if that's it, no one has another um, question. We're gonna let Bumani go. We thank you for your time, and most certainly we're gonna have some more meetings for those of you that are really serious. And we know when you're serious, because we'll check with Bumani to see if anybody did the paperwork from our group and if they have then we're going to have most certainly some more um, meetings because we want want to have two a protocol meeting as we get closer to the tour so that we know <laughs> as americans how we should conduct ourselves sometimes we don't know we do what we do here and it's out of order so we're going to do all of those wonderful things so that we have a, a just a wonderful time, wonderful time. We we just came back in August, <laughs> just came back from Ghana oh, with wow. Ada, August and we year. yeah we did 10, 10 uh, districts in, <laughs> in thirteen days. <laughs> I was moving. Yeah, we really was. But you know what I like? I like that Coconut Grove Hotel. Man, that's a pretty place, right on the ocean. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Anyway, okay, family, that's it. All right, All right. family, everyone take care, and I'm available via email if you want to just email me or uh, send me a message. All right, shalom, right, everyone. Family. Shalom, this all is right. Deborah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you all have a nice evening, and shalom. most certainly go to the um, website, look at all the documents. You'll see all the documents you, you, you will need. That's why we went with Bumani rather than some of the others because he's very transparent. Everything you, you will need or think you need, all the questions we've asked him really are, are on that website. So just, <laughs> you, know, we, it is. you know, we have the information, so we read, <laughs> we read to you information. And we've been on your website, so yeah, we, we are good. We are good. And we thank you for your time. And uh, somebody sent us, sent us your name and your information. We were so happy. I'm happy that Pastor reached out to you and, um, you know, and you all talked and, and we are real, real satisfied. Well, perfect. Right. And uh, I can even call them back tomorrow and we can just kind of do a follow up from these uh, conferences and things like that. So I know sometimes, you know, that's the level of communication. But uh, nevertheless, our uh, family appreciate everybody's energy, and uh, we'll work on a game plan how we can all connect. Uh, that way, um, it's uh, in order and organized. Okay. Uh, everyone, enjoy your night. <laughs> take care of yourself and good talking and meeting everybody. I look forward to everybody being a part of uh, uh, or us all being a community together. Okay, Pastor, we'll look forward to meeting you tomorrow. To hear from you on tomorrow. All right. Shalom. Okay. Shalom. Shalom.